You are looking live at Texas Memorial Stadium, where a number one ranked team visits for the first time in 56 years. But this time, it's number one versus number two. It's Saturday Night Football on ABC. It shocked and hurt them. Now it motivates them. The Buckeyes' bitter loss to Texas last year launched the Longhorns towards a national title. Tonight, they meet again. Two proud schools with historic storied football programs. Both teams the embodiment of the states they represent. The values ingrained in their hearts collide on the field. For the first time in 10 years, number one against number two in the regular season, and earlier in the season than ever before. A game with far-reaching implications and deep personal motivations. For one team, reaffirmation. For the other, revenge. For both, a reason to believe the national championship is their destiny. Ohio State and Texas play tonight on Saturday Night Football. ESPN Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Here at Texas Memorial Stadium, it's the number one Ohio State Buckeyes versus the number two Texas Longhorns. For one year, fans of both these schools have waited for the rematch. And the game in Columbus last year was a classic. You should be so fortunate to have one just like that here tonight in Austin. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brett Musburger, along with Kirk Herbstreit and Bob Davies. Not a whole lot you can say when you got one versus two, but we'll try. A couple of great stories. And, Kirk, let's start with the Texas quarterback, Colt McCoy. Well, Brent, what a story. Colt McCoy grew up in a small town in Texas. High school coach. His father was a high school coach. He's really waited for this opportunity his whole life. And now it's here. He's going up against the number one team in the country. He has all the physical abilities, the quick arm. He manages the offense, but he's never been in this atmosphere. How will he handle this kind of crowd and this kind of hype? Very, very important for Texas to get him the ball early and to get him to relax and just make a good throw to get his confidence going. And Bob, a year ago, it was the Buckeye defense with the Stars. This year, it's the offense. Well, Brent, it's obvious to me why this Ohio State offense is getting so much attention. It's because they have so much talent. I think they have two legitimate Heisman Trophy candidates on offense. I also think Troy Smith is the most improved quarterback in college football. He can make all the throws. Ted Ginn's always been a dynamic return man. He's now a dynamic receiver. This Texas offense is for real. Absolutely, and I think you can both agree. The matchup of the quarterbacks is critical. And when you think of it, which one tonight will experience the thrill of it? ESPN College Football on ABC. The numbers are growing every day. In Miami, New York, places like Chicago, San Francisco, and L.A. One of the fastest growing brands in some of America's largest cities is Pontiac. Pontiac, designed for action. Vote for this week's Pontiac game-changing performance. Almost $200,000 in general scholarship contributions is on the line.
Must be about 2.30. Shell's using correction fluid to do a French manicure. Brandon's got himself another tricycle. And Adam will be attacked by killer bees in five, four, three, two. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like somebody missed snack time. Get back to your senses with a new way to snack. McDonald's Snack Wrap. Tender all-white premium chicken breast meat with lettuce, cheddar jack cheese, and ranch sauce and a soft flour tortilla. Try it for just $1.29. Nice nail, Cheryl. Six-speed all-wheel drive IS250 from Lexus at Hendrick Lexus in Charlotte. Captain, I prepared you a nice salad. How am I to eat a salad? Sir, Taco Bell makes a chicken ranch salad. It's easy to eat anywhere. On the go, as they say. Oi, let me give ye a pat on the back. <laughs> Taco Bell's new chicken ranch salad burrito. Marinated all white meat chicken, crisp romaine lettuce, and a zesty avocado ranch dressing wrapped up in a flour tortilla. For the salad that lets you keep one hand on the wheel, think outside the bun. Masked men shoot a family's dog, and the neighborhood is frightened. This is ESPN on ABC. John Saunders with Craig James and Doug Flutie. A couple of guys who played in big games like the one you'll see tonight. Now, Texas, it seems like it was five minutes ago. They won the Rose Bowl in the national championship. Any advantage because of that? Absolutely. You know it and I know it. You know it. When you've been there and you've been on the big stage, it gives you confidence. You know how to prepare. You're not flustered right before kickoff. It's going to help young Colt McCoy when he takes the field for Texas. However, Troy Smith at Ohio State, he's 6-1 and one against ranked opponents. The guy has been in the big game himself. Maybe not like the Rose Bowl that you're talking about there, but he knows how to take his team on the road to give them success. Ohio State, Michigan doesn't get much bigger than that other than one verse two. And this is his stage, his coming out party. He's going to be excited. I know he's been there before, but he is going to be fired up to play this game. All right. And game played earlier today. The Fighting Irish in Notre Dame trying to look impressive because they weren't last week. The defense got it done today. Tom Zibikowski returns this one 25 yards. You know what? Anthony Morelli at quarterback was supposed to make plays to win the game for Penn State. Not here. Tom Zibikowski delivers the knockout blow. The old boxer does it to him. 41 to 17 was the final in that game. Right now it's time to take you out to Austin, Texas to the game day crew. Let's join Chris Fowler and Lee Corso. John, thank you. A warm evening here in the Burn Orange Nation, but <laughs> Lee, frankly, there are far tougher environments to overcome as a visitor in college football than this one. Those guys talked about Troy Smith's experience. This atmosphere is not going to beat him. Texas will have to beat him. And as for Colt McCoy, maybe a little piece of his predecessor, Vince Young, left behind because this Texas team, those guys mentioned it, does look very calm and very confident. Well, Texas is a very confident football team in this stadium. Why? Well, they've won 16 straight games here. They won 14 straight games when the game started after 5.30. <laughs> and it's now 7.15. And also they beat nine straight ranked teams in this place. So I'm going with that confidence. I'm going with Texas. The Longhorns. All right, Texas. How do you like this helmet, Fowler? I love the props, Lee. Go, Texas. Corso calling for a 22nd consecutive win by the Longhorns. Remember, the loser not out of the national championship chase, but it's only the winner who can control their destiny. Two veteran poised, mature teams ready to go. Kick it upstairs now to Brent Musburger. Brent, take it away. And the Texas Longhorns, the defending national champions, ready to pour out onto the field. Even though they are second behind Ohio State, folks, they are the favorites because they're playing at home. So Texas and the Ohio State Buckeyes are coming up next on ABC.
Southwest Airlines fun fares are available every day to your favorite destinations starting at just $59. You are now free to move about the country. People ask me, do I see things flash before my eyes during a crash? I tell them, it's pretty much blurred streaks of metal, asphalt, grass, rubber, smoke. Oh, and those guys in fireproof suits. NASCAR 2007, rated E for everyone, EA Sports. It's in the game. I grew up with Star Wars. It's a thrill to watch my kids experience the same thing all over again. Rediscover. Do or do not. There is no trap. The ultimate adventure with your family. I love the characters. Darth Vader's just cool. I am your father. Impressive. I just love the music. Dun, 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 dun. They're timeless. The Star Wars trilogy is now available on individual DVDs to share with your family. For a limited time only, September 12th. I would love to have a pet Wookiee. <laughs> Why do you always get the front seat? Because I have the higher education. What you I mean? took honors classes. <laughs> In I high school. Hey, it's Bobby Bowden. I'm going to touch him. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. I'm still going to touch him. Part of Allstate, your choice auto insurance. Are you in good hands? <laughs> that wasn't him. But you still touched him. This ESPN production is available on ABC HD, presented by Dish Network. Well, Texas without a couple of players tonight because Mac Brown suspended starting corner Terrell Brown and backup linebacker Tyrell Gatewood after their arrest on misdemeanor marijuana and gun charges earlier in the week. The drug charges against both were dropped yesterday because former linebacker Aaron Harris, who was driving the car, took responsibility. The attorney for Brown says he expects the gun charges to be dropped early next week. Lisa Salters, the fourth member of our team, has more on the story. Lisa? Well, Brent, Terrell Brown's attorney let me speak to his client for a couple of minutes yesterday, and the first thing that Terrell Brown said to me was, I want to apologize to my teammates, to my coaches, to all the Longhorn fans. He said, I feel like I let everyone down. Brown said, I never meant to be a distraction to the team. I'm a good person. He says, I always try to do the right thing, and right now I have to accept my punishment like a man, learn from my mistakes. And he says, I completely understand Coach Brown decision. Still, Brown said, it's going to hurt. He said, I trained for this one game the entire summer. He said, it's going to be painful to have to watch it from home. Brent? Right, Lisa, and uh, Mac Brown made the announcement to the team earlier in the week. Jim Trussell, of course, will probe at the replacement at that corner spot and see what he's got. Texas won the toss. They have deferred, so the Buckeyes will start on offense and the all-purpose kicker for Texas the left-footed Greg Johnson who transferred here from Vanderbilt and the electrifying Ted Ginn is back inside the five-yard line so we will see early what the kickoff strategy will be for the Longhorns underway and a booming kick out of the end zone so here comes Troy Smith, Bob Davey, and uh, what should the folks at home watch tonight with number 10? Well, Brent, I think an improved quarterback. I think early in his career, he trusted his legs more than he trusted his arm. I think the biggest improvement you'll see is he now stands in that pocket and looks to throw first. This guy can make all the throws. Antonio Pittman. He's the deep set running back. They put a fullback blocker, Stan White, in front of him. And from that formation, White leads the way, and Pittman is stopped. And now in our city lineup. So for Troy Smith, you recognize the name of the skilled guys, several of the linemen, but note Doug Dadish, the senior from Warren. He was the left tackle last year. He's now moved to center. It means that Alex Boone, only a sophomore on the left side, very impressive in that offensive line here for the Buckeyes. You're going to see a lot of movement here early in this game by Ohio State's offense. Buckeyes coaches feel that Texas is too good to just line up and play. They have to have movement to slow down Texas. 
Second and seven. Fake the handoff. Smith's first pass is complete for the first down. And running in space is Ginn. And he can go. 40, 35, and out of bounds. They caught him in space. And as we take a look at that, Bob Davey, that is the key for the Buckeyes. And the first thing you're going to notice, Troy Smith rolling to his left. Ted Ginn on the little inside slant route. And when you give a guy with world-class speed that much open space, you see what happens. The accuracy of the throw there by Troy Smith enabling Ted Ginn to make the catch in stride and utilize his speed to pick up a big gain for Ohio State. And at 46, Kurt, right off the bat. And the Buckeyes threatening. The Buckeyes offense is matched against the Texas defense. So if you will... Strength against strength because of the quarterback position. First down and 10. And Smith pulls back out. Has time. Fires over the middle. Incomplete. Just a touch shorter. And he might have had Brian Hartline for six. We check now that Texas defense. And, of course, uh, Lisa filled you in on the details of the key story. Veterans up front. And Ryan Palmer, number 29, and he will be working in there. They will substitute Brandon Foster in there along with Palmer. So, in effect, you're going to have both of them trying to replace Terrell Brown here tonight. Second and ten. Pittman on a fine cut. And there was daylight there, Bob Davey, for the first down. And you're going to watch Antonio Pittman. This is a great cutback run. He shows great vision. He gets an excellent block by Rory Nichols, the big tight end. And when I asked Joe Daniels, their offensive quarterback coach, give me one word on Antonio Pittman, he said tough. Toughness, the power to be able to get in there, and the also great vision. And, Coach, as you said, a nice cut back there to see the open hole in the backside. Aaron Ross goes over with Ginn. Off to Troy Smith's left. But they run that option look with Pittman, and Pittman powers just short of the 15-yard line. When you talk about the impact players for Ohio State, it's pretty obvious. We've already seen number 10. We've already seen number 25, and we've seen number 20, number 7. That's a great graphic right there because those are impact guys. A lot of option play action, a couple passes off the option attack from the shotgun. That time a pitch and a big game. Interesting the way they're trying to attack from the option here early. And using the fullback again, Stan White in front of Pittman to try and clear another hole on the right side. But... He is snagged and brought down Roderick Muckleroy, a backup linebacker, number 38, the redshirt freshman, whom they are very impressed with, Kirk. They feel that they have the defensive speed to be able to win the battle up front at the line of scrimmage and attack downhill. That's what's so surprising about this first drive by Ohio State, mixing up their formations, mixing up their play calling, very, very balanced, and keeping Gene Chizik's defense on their heels here on early in this game. And if I'm Texas defense right now, don't let number 10 run with that football on third and four. And Pittman is out now, and they empty it with Maurice Wells. Smith can't find a receiver, dances, and he is down, and he is covered up by the middle linebacker who was spying Rashad Bobino. He's a weak side linebacker a year ago, and 44 keeping an eye on number 10, and it's field goal time for the Buckeyes. And Gene Chizik, Texas defensive coordinator, loves speed over size. That's a tremendous job by Rashad Bobino spying on Troy Smith. Aaron Petri. Redshirt freshman, this is a 29-yarder. No Nugent, no Houston. So Aaron Petri. The 28-yarder, and no good. So the drive peters out. Wide left. And now Texas will have their first at bat. So when you come back, you'll see the freshman quarterback 
from Tuscola, Texas. Hey, what's up? I can use some help. Come on. <laughs> Who is that guy? D Wade. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, it's hot out here, huh? My dream is to leave the world a better place than I found it. Oh, yeah. Good job, buddy. She was awesome. Yo. Hey, coach. The new 2007 Lincoln Navigator. With enough room for, well, the basketball team. Life's going. Where to next? an insurance company, they call it Liberty Mutual. Responsibility. What's your policy? Liberty Mutual. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. He's 6'3", weighs 205 pounds, Kurt. Colt McCoy is second star. Well, he is a gym rat. He is a young man who has worked very, very hard for this opportunity as a freshman. Thought about it, dreamed about it. He's about to take his first snap in a big game as a quarterback at Texas. That familiar shotgun that Vince Young used the road to an undefeated season. And on first down, Selvin Young, he's got a little more dash than a year ago when he came back from major knee surgery. And you can see on the first carry of the game, Colt. McCoy from Tuscola, Texas, town of about 700, one stoplight downtown. And as Kirk told me, it's always blinking. <laughs> when you have a young quarterback like this, it's so important for him to get rid of the butterflies. And a lot of times, it's a quick little throw, get the completion out of the way, and then start to manage the offense. Going without that huddle here, just to pick up some rhythm. McCoy keeps it, and Malcolm Jenkins. The corner makes the stop for the Buckeyes and our city offensive line. So, Colt, you can see you recognize some of the names. You see himself in Lima Swede had the winning catch, of course. But Justin Blaylock has up an opportunity to go to the NFL to come back for his senior season. And Colt is very happy to have the big rascal over there at right tackle. Second and seven. Pass was low, scooped up, and it's going to be incomplete. Wasn't that a one hopper? That was a baseball player making the catch there, Quan Cosby, <laughs> and he took off in, in his old sport. Uh, that was legal. <laughs> and our uh, Buckeye defense here, um, fine, fine front four, but the rest of them, they've got to replace. And Laurenitis, who started in the middle because of Carpenter's injury in the Fiesta Bowl, he'll have to anchor the linebackers and bring this group along. It's third down and seven for Colt. What a wonderful, wonderful name for a Texas quarterback. Colt McCoy. Looking to pull the trigger. Batted away beautifully by James Laurinaitis, the linebacker we told you about, making a big defensive play here for the Bucs. The first thing you're going to see is Vernon Golston, the outside linebacker slash defensive end, gets great pressure. Colt McCoy steps up, and the Texas fans wanted pass interference on number 33, James Laronitis, the linebacker, but didn't get it. It's very obvious that Ohio State moving around quite a bit before the snap, hoping to confuse the young quarterback to try to get him to put the ball into coverage. 
Here it comes again. You saw number seven. You can't wait to see what they do with this punt. Johnson hangs it high. Again drifts back. Got it on the 14, and he's covered up and down at the 10-yard line. Michael Griffin, the twin brother of Marcus, who has worked his way into the starting lineup, comes down on Ted Ginn and makes the stop. When we come back, we'll see the stars who are shining for the Buckeyes, Ted Ginn and Troy Smith. Are we going for a honeymoon? A romantic island in the south? Jamaica? Uh, credit card miles are blacked out. A little more south. Antigua. Uh, blacked out further south. Aruba? Getting warmer. Isn't this great? Did you notice? No bugs. We gotta switch to Capital One. Get Capital One's new No Hassle Rewards. Now with no blackout dates, no earn caps, and no miles expiration. Hey, it's walrus mating season. What's in your wallet? Get full from Taco Bell's value menu. Bruno, what is the holdup? I'm full? Not possible. You are hungry, Bruno. Nine time competitive eating champion. You don't get full. Eight and a half pound burrito for warm up. Hungry Bruno, full! Introducing Taco Bell's half pound value menu lineup. Now fill up on any of three hefty half pound burritos to keep your stomach and your wallet full. Think outside the fun. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines, the low fare from here to there. It's on Southwest Airlines at southwest.com. Lincoln, reach higher. And IBM, what makes you special? The beautiful Capitol building here in Austin, the great state of Texas. And Bob Davey, you were a Texas Aggie defensive coordinator. I know you've got some good thoughts. And right after this first play by the Buckeyes, I want to ask you about the crowd in Austin. On a play fake, Smith rolls out to the right. There's Gonzalez. And that'll be a first and ten. Now it's a sellout. It's jam-packed. It was so noisy in Columbus a year ago. Will this disrupt the offense. Well, Brent, this is one of my favorite places to play all across America because it's a great environment. The crowd noise is not a big factor. You notice all that grass behind the end line right there. And really, that's room for Bevo to graze down there, but it allows the crowd noise to escape this stadium. So I don't think it's much of a factor. And the way Ohio State's offense is playing right now, you can see it isn't. And Bevo's upset because Ugg is in the red zone. And then, you know, if you want to check those rascals out, First down and 10, and Troy Smith puts it back in Ginn's hands. Short game this time for the 30. You know, Kirk, as we watch Troy Smith and Ginn, of course, uh, virtually brothers from the uh, Cleveland area, talk about the maturation of Troy Smith. I know you live in Columbus. You've been so close to him. Well, he's, he's become a very confident leader over the course of the last year and a half. I, I think what happened really is the coaches halfway through last season began to become confident in his abilities. They trusted him more, and now he is trusting his own decision-making. So he comes into this atmosphere with this crowd on the road, very similar to the way Vince Young came into Columbus last year, a confident leader who believes in his team's ability to play. Second and seven. 
And Pittman is stopped in the hole by Marcus Griffin. Hard hitting safety. And let's go to John Saunders in New York. Third down and seven. And we will uh, catch up with John here a little bit later. Gene Chiswick, the defensive coordinator of Texas. 29 straight victories. He has been the coordinator for folks. He was with an undefeated Auburn prior to coming to Texas. Last year's undefeated national championship. And right now, Gonzalez is giving him heartburn. Uh, Bob Davey, number 11, is stepping up as a big-time receiver here. And I'll tell you what, is there any question about Troy Smith's arm strength? But he goes to Gonzalez, and any time you get a safety, number 27, Michael Griffin is a heck of a football player, but they get the safety isolated on Anthony Gonzalez. But the arm strength and a great third down conversion right there, Kirk. Interesting to see that time. Teddy again used as a decoy to clear out Aaron Ross and vacate a wide open zone. Well designed play by Ohio State using Teddy again as a decoy to pick up that first down. The freshman phenom, Chris Wells from Akron, Ohio, is the tailback. Here is Chris, the number one rated running back coming out of high school. Meany is called, and Roderick McElroy is getting a lot of action over there at the Will linebacker for Texas. They expect the Bucks to come running at them, and he's a little bit stouter than Drew Kelson, who came to that position from safety. And one thing you notice, Ohio State, the ability to mix the spread offense, as Kirk mentioned earlier, with the power offense. Texas, an undersized speed first defense, the ability to line up an eye back and run that ball right now for Ohio State. Buckeyes drove down and missed a field goal on their opening drive, but they are coming right back. Now in trouble, has to throw it away. The Texas bench is screaming for grounding, but I believe he got it past the line of scrimmage. So there'll be no call on that. Brian Robinson, number 39, was applying pressure, and now there is a flag that does come down. To number 10, offense. Still in the pocket, no receiver in the area. Spot the foul, lost it down, third down. And the point there, Troy Smith was inside the tackle box, still in the pocket. That's yeah. why it was called intentional grounding. Yeah, exactly, uh, Coach. It's Bill Lamagne, fine referee from the Big Ten. They got this right. Rick Nelson is his umpire. Keep in mind, you can throw the football away if you are outside the tackle box. Excellent call right there by the officiating crew to correct that call and get it right. As a result, it'll be third down and 14 with Pittman back at running back, and they move him out as an added receiver. Smith stayed with it as long as he could. And then they swarm all over him. Getting back to the original line of scrimmage, Marcus Griffin and Bobino are there again. And the Buckeyes will be forced to punt. And it'll be one of their veterans, A.J. Trapasso, who was their punter a year ago, coming onto the field. In Texas... The last five years in college football has blocked more kicks, Brent and Kirk, than any other school in the NCAA. Injured player. Got an injured player, as you can see, down on the ground. So, while well, we have that, let's now check in with, uh, with John Saunders back in uh, New York. John? Brent, thanks a lot. Time for the Sports Center 30 at 30 update. First, news from Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish Brady Quinn had three touchdown passes today as they blast out Penn State. And Roger Federer wins today the U.S. Open, becoming the first player since 68 to reach six consecutive Grand Slam finals. Brent. Thank you, John. And uh, one of their fine safeties, Marcus Griffin. And Horns and uh, their fans are really happy to see him up and walking off the field. He's a good one. 
Back deep is Aaron Ross. Bob mentioned blocking punts, but they just lost their best punt blocker, Marcus Griffin, with a record six. They stepped off the field right now, and Trapasso will punt it toward Ross. High, booming punt. And the Horns let it go into the end zone for a touchback. It'll come out on the 20-yard line, where again we'll be taking a look at the freshman quarterback, Colt McCoy, only his second start, and it's against the top-ranked team in the nation. Today's singular All-American flashback, Earl Campbell. This native Texan used an unprecedented blend of strength and speed in becoming one of the all-time great Longhorns. His career was highlighted by his 1977 season when he led the nation in rushing and scoring, becoming the University of Texas' first Heisman Trophy recipient. Text VOTE to 87654 now on your singular wireless phone for a chance at a trip to the national championship game. Introducing the world's smallest camera flip phone. Take up to nine pictures with one push of a button. The Pantech C300, only from Singular. Beautiful features, fashionably small. Singular, raising the bar. When Susie and I retire, we'll be taking trips like this whenever we want. It's a good thing we've been planning. At Pacific Life, giving you the right tools to help you meet your financial goals is what we're all about. As you look to the future, look to Pacific Life. Ask your financial professional about Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. This is the supply line, and it's connected to the angle stop. Hey, Jack, can I help? Not right now, Jake. This is a grown-up job. Okay. Hey, buddy. Want to hold the flashlight for me? Okay. What's that? It's a supply line. Supply line? This is an angle stop. The supply line goes... Emmett Smith, NFL legend, gridiron guard, master of the... <gasps> Mambo? You had nice legs. Dancing with the Stars, live to our premiere, Tuesday at 8, 7 central, only on ABC. John Saunders back in New York with the primetime Pulse. Over on ESPN right now, Georgia leading South Carolina 10 to nothing. And on ESPN2, LSU blowing out Arizona 31 zip. Brent, back to you. Sophomore Jamal Charles, he's number 25. This will be his first series. Folks, he's got a little serious speed. Fourth in the NCAA 100 meters. And he did that while also carrying a little bit of a football load without even working hard at it. So he's the running back alongside Colt McCoy. And he gets the first handoff to start this series. And there is that speed. A first down to the 32 yard line Marcus Freeman makes the stop it's a 12 yard run well we've talked about Colt McCoy we've mentioned Tuscola Texas where is it folks there it is a population of around 700 how far down here to Austin 250 look at that capacity 80,000 Bob Debbie ever recruit anybody from Tuscola Texas for the Aggies <laughs> sweet play now and there's the pitch Another first down, and Charles is going left, right, left, right. You talk about Tuscola, Texas, as we see Colt McCoy run the option. You know it's small in the state of Texas when they don't have a Dairy Queen in that town. You guys have all been oh, through these small towns. It, yeah. If there's no Dairy Queen, that's a small Texas town. As we look at his dad, what's going through his mind right now? He's a football coach. Colt is knocked down and uh, on the pitch, and uh, 
Kirk, they're running this beautifully with Charles, the running back. Well, Ohio State is crashing down on Colt McCoy. and Give him a lot of credit here for being prepared to make the pitch. And once he makes the pitch, there's a little bit of a difference now with Jamal Charles. Brent, as you indicated, the speed that he has to get to the outside. Ohio State right now having a tough time adjusting to that speed of Jamal Charles. Selvin Young, the veteran who cocks his stance a little bit, now replaces Charles. And there is the quick pass for the first down, his first completion, and it goes to Quan Cosby. He was in the Los Angeles Angels organization and uh, came on back and played football. He was a very highly recruited high school wide receiver, though. And a great plan by Greg Davis, again, doing the things that Colt McCoy is most comfortable doing, some options, some quick passes. Here's that option look again, and McCoy's going to take a lick. Battles away with Laurinaitis, number 33, hanging on. 33, Laurinaitis on the tackle. I really like Laurinaitis, the young linebacker. Played last year some as a freshman. Watch the speed from the inside out. Excellent job defending the option right there. Young linebacker who had to step in for Bobby Carpenter, Brent, as you remember, in the Michigan game, and then also the Fiesta Bowl against Notre Dame. He's become a leader this year for them. Second down and 11 as the horns mount a drive. Daylight back on a cutback run to the 25-yard line. The veteran from Houston, senior Selvin Young, 12 more yards. And they are ripping huge holes now in that defense. And they're doing it with just a couple of huddles along the way. A little counter, and you see big Justin Blaylock at 340 pounds pulling around. Branch, you mentioned Selvin Young has dropped 15 pounds since the Rose Bowl. He does look quicker to me, Kirk. And all of a sudden, Texas offensive line, the quick tempo, they're starting to control the line of scrimmage. Selvin came out and then went back in. And so Charles is back off to the sideline. And on first down, after it again into Selvin Young's hands. You know why he said, I got this one. He wants to make the catch. He said, hey, I got a young guy. He, actually, Selvin Young's a big brother to Jamal Charles. He probably thought, hey, little guy, let me take this one and see what I can do with it. 15 pounds off of Selvin Young, being healthy for Selvin Young. He has waited to become the leader with being a roommate of Vince Young last year. It's his turn, and he's taking advantage of it right now. Second down and seven. McCoy and the Horns mounting a drive. Bump incomplete. Interference is called. Swede, the intended receiver. Malcolm Jenkins bumps him. One of the big questions. Pass interference. Defense number five. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. And he met number two, of course, Jenkins, as you can watch. And here's what happens, Kirk, when you don't play the ball as a defensive back. You saw Malcolm Jenkins just try to play through Lima Sweep. That was an obvious call. I was ready to say one of the big questions about the Buckeyes, the defensive backfield. Jamal Charles, number 25. He's now the running back. The officials are going to respot the ball right now. Let's uh, see where they finally put it down. I think they put it down at about the seven yard line. You know, the nerves that we talked about for the young quarterback, you can forget about him now. He is settled into this position. He's in a comfort zone, which is what Greg Davis wanted to do. And now all of a sudden, he's just worrying about executing the game plan. And how about Texas? No huddle basically on this whole drive with the redshirt freshman quarterback. In trouble off the blitz, steps away from him, fires end zone, incomplete. He eluded the corner blitz, but there was enormous pressure, and the Buckeyes did a fine job of also defending the receiver in the corner. Well, the first thing you see, the athletic ability right now is Malcolm Jenkins misses Colt McCoy, and then the athletic effort by Lima Swede right here comes up with a tremendous one-hand catch. But it doesn't count Ooh. when you're out of bounds and you drop it. <laughs> so for two. Second down and goal. Snaps it off. This one's complete. 
Short of the end zone, fumble. Picked up on the run now by Washington. Donald Washington coming down the far sideline. Bumped out of bounds on the Buckeye bench. And big number 33, James Laurinaitis in the middle of it against Billy Pittman. When you talk about things that win football games, maybe win national championships, I want you to watch this effort by James Laurinaitis right there to strip the football out. Those things win these kind of games, maybe win national championships. And Billy Pittman there fighting to get extra yards, had the ball out far, trying to stretch it out, and a big impact there by Laronidas, jarred it loose before his knee touched. Big turnover and a big sequence of events here for Ohio State. And now do you get Ted Ginn involved in some kind of reverse or something right now? Take advantage of this momentum if you're Ohio State. Maurice Wells is the running back. Time out on the field. Coach's challenge. So this is the earliest challenge that we have heard of. And Mac Brown telling us that he would take the challenge to the fourth quarter. I am I am almost stunned by this after having a conversation with Mac. He knows it's already been reviewed up in the booth. There was time to see it. Did you see anything, Bob? Does he have a point here? Brent, I'm as surprised as you are because, no, he doesn't have a point. That ball is clearly stripped out, and we oh. were sitting on the couch yesterday with Matt Brown. Oh, absolutely. This, Kirk, is this conversation mistake. came up. He said he is going to save his timeouts because the point is they're being reviewed anyhow exactly. in the press box. And that we had a perfect angle. We got enough Texas fans that can sneak a peek up here and say, Matt, turn it over now. I, because the coaches have told us there's no use using that challenge. You're going to need it late. And this is pretty obvious, isn't it, that Laurinaitis has got the ball out, Kirk? Well, the ball is out, and when you're a coach, and you might sit on the couch and talk about, I'm going to save it for the fourth quarter, but that was such a big point in this football game that he felt, maybe he talked to Pittman and said, wait, were you down? I, I, you, it may be a big point right now, but I guarantee you there'll be You'd a like to have, like the to have that quarter. Back. I guarantee you that's how football operates. First down and 10 at midfield here. It's already been confirmed by replay, so there's now, nothing they can do, and, and they've told the Texas sideline, uh, somebody has made a mistake down. That's, that's simply, you would not do that in that situation. And they lose, the, time. they now, lose the time out here. He is unhappy. Aquino, the assistant coach, and Texas loses a timeout on top of it, remember, on a coach's challenge. So it's one versus two. It's Texas. It's Ohio State. And the passions are running high, folks. I thought Coach Davey had an interesting point here. Big turn of events and the momentum of the game. If you get Teddy again isolated one-on-one, -on -one, do you take a shot down the field right here? And he is isolated one-on-one -on, -one on Aaron Harris. Smith fakes. Looks to go deep. Diving Gonzalez catch at the 25. What a pair of hands. It was Gonzalez against the Michigan Wolverines who rose up and made that huge catch as Ohio State came back to win that game in Ann Arbor. A very underrated receiver because all we do is talk about number seven. And Anthony Gonzalez comes all the way across the football field. Again, man-to-man -man coverage, Kirk. Michael Griffin, he's not going to match up on Anthony Gonzalez. And that's what makes the Ohio State attack so good is they have three or four receivers. If you man up a safety on Anthony Gonzalez for, for Troy Smith, that's pitch and catch. Maurice Wells splits out of the backfield, the running back. They go empty with Troy. The offensive line gives him plenty of time. A little bit high, and it should have been caught, though. It was not a perfect throw to Wells, and that's Maurice, remember, the sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. But I thought from the naked eye that the youngster should have grabbed. I think that's why Maurice is a running back <laughs> and not a wide receiver. He comes down and just runs the curl route. Again, a great window to throw the football through right there, Troy Smith. You're exactly right. That football should have been caught. Should have been caught. They went to the empty set. They flexed the tail back out. And that's one that Maurice Wells knows he's got to make that catch. This is the second time that Ohio State has mounted a serious drive. You figure they've got to come away with something. There was movement in the offensive line. 
This is going to cost them a big five yards. And uh, Kirk, I want to go back on a point on that first drive that failed with the missed field goal. You said Ball that start. Jim Tressel does offense. not have five his security penalty. blanket this Still year. Second down. Uh, he, he does not have the security blanket. And one of the things that he was concerned about coming on the road was the conditioning factor in the heat. And Brent, we talked about this before the game. The one thing that's for sure is the, the depth, the depth on their offensive line. They're playing their entire second unit of the offensive line. And if they don't have a chance to score, not having Mike Nugent or Josh Houston is a major concern for them after missing that first field goal. But the second unit right now in their depth, a big priority for Ohio State in the heat. Second and 15, and here's Smith. Got Gonzalez again. What a combo. A first down, and how about the strength of this arm on this throw? There are some scouts who are going to take note when he rifles this one to the sideline. Folks, he's a little undersized for Sunday ball, but he's a good, good-looking quarterback. And, Brent, you remember our conversation with Gene Chizik, the defensive coordinator, yesterday? He said they are going to know on every snap where number seven Ted Ginn is. They better right now change that plan a little bit and find out where number 11 is for the Buckeyes. At the 12 yard line. 11 is over on the slot, the formation. And Smith is eaten up by that defensive front. That was Derek Loki, the defensive tackle, nose man. And see, coach, I think that all the talk this week about Terrell Brown not being in, him being the best cover corner for Texas, when you talk to the Texas coaches, Aaron Ross is the best cover corner. What you lose in Terrell Brown is an experienced guy, a physical guy, and now you're putting in young corners and safeties who have never been in that situation. So it wasn't so much how Teddy Ginn would benefit. It was Anthony Gonzalez and some of the other Ohio State receivers, and right now that's how Ohio State's trying to attack him. Georgia giving the old ball coach fits in that one down, Sky. Smith rolling the pocket. Conley fires touchdown in the corner of the end zone down there. It was a beautiful throw for the score, and he just worked Anthony Gonzalez. And there is one of my favorite characters from Columbus, folks. Does he look like the, the great old coach? And Gonzalez with the touchdown puts the Buckeyes ahead. And I'll tell you something, Troy Smith is on fire. We saw him outplay Brady Quinn in the Fiesta Bowl. Tim Crowder right here, number 80, loses contain. And how about that bullet to Anthony Gonzalez? The patience there by Teddy again, and then picking on Brandon Foster, who was in for Terrell Brown for a touchdown. Petri adds the extra point. So remember how this started. It was a first and goal for Texas going in from the seven-yard line. Laurinaitis forced the turnover. And then Kirk, it was Gonzalez. And Kirk just mentioned it. Brandon Foster locked up one-on-one -on -one with Anthony Gonzalez. The Buckeyes take advantage of it. And because of their ability to mix it up, every time Troy Smith has a ball fake, the linebackers freeze. He had to get outside of the pocket by a lot of time. Anthony Gonzalez made two or three moves on Foster to finally have a chance to make the catch and to make that catch for the touchdown. But picking on the young, inexperienced secondary. We got an update. Let's go to Matt Weiner in New York. Matt? Brent, do I ever have a Taco Bell update for you from Tallahassee? Florida State seems to be suffering the effects of this short week against Troy. Omar Holgaboop's pass is tipped, caught by Gary Banks. The Trojans punch it in on their next snap. 17-10 Troy in the fourth quarter. Holy moly. Where did that wow. come from, Kirk? <laughs> huh? I don't think I don't think we talked about that one on college game day. I don't think anybody expected that. Oh, we just, my. The Knowles just looked like a team on a mission against the Miami Hurricanes. They went to sleep. There were points in that game, though, and I thought both teams were sloppy on offense. Oh, yeah. I watched you guys down there on Monday night. 104 to go here in the first quarter, and so Texas reveals a weakness as they lose a starting corner, and the Buckeyes take advantage of it. Next week, a resurgent Nebraska team heads to Los Angeles in search of an upset. They will take on number three, USC. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines next Saturday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. College football lives here, so we'll take this show on the road.
we'll go to the West Coast. And a question for you, folks. Who's going to be number two? You figure the loser of this game will slip. Notre Dame, very impressive today in beating Penn State. USC, well, they were on the road, dumped Arkansas, and they're taking the week off. So they could rise up to number two. We'll have to wait and see when the polls come out. Selvin Young, the veteran, on the fake now by McCoy. Going deep, and that was Andre Amos, the defender, who just knocked it down at the right instant. Billy Pittman, who had a big game last year in Columbus. And you're going to see Billy Pittman get inside Andre Amos on the slant route right here. He ends up in great position. No safety in the middle of the field. And Andre Amos over the top a little bit right there. Might have got away with the call. Second down and 10. Selvin stretches it to the right to daylight, breaks free on a cutback, stumbling to midfield. <laughs> 30 yard burst by Selvin Young. And amazing what 15 pounds a difference it makes. Selvin Young right here, excellent speed. You say Blaylock right there gets a little block on Laronitis. Then in the open field, he breaks down Andre Amos. I'll tell you what, that weight loss helped this running back. He looks quick. Alex Barrow and Todd Denninger are in the defensive line. Trying to stretch it now with the youngster, Charles, as the first quarter comes to an end here in Austin, Texas. Both teams threaten. Ohio State scores at number one, leads number two. And ESPN Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines, returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. I can use some help. Come on. <laughs> Who is that guy? D Wade. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, it's hot out here, huh? My dream is to leave the world a better place than I found it. Oh, yeah. Good job, buddy. That's awesome. Yo. <laughs> hey, coach. The new 2007 Lincoln Navigator. With enough room for, well, the basketball team. Life's going. Where to next? Don't miss Jimmy Kimmel in primetime with Ben Stiller. Wednesday at 10, 9 central on NBC. Daybreak in the morning is how I start my morning. Channel 9 Eyewitness News Daybreak. The news, the weather, the traffic, everything I need to start my day. We watch it first thing in the morning so we know how to dress our daughter for school. Let you know what roads you need to avoid. Catches me up on the overnight news. We got Erica Bryan and my man Scott Wickersham. I love their weather. I like Mark Watkins. He just tells me what the weather is going to be. Best covers, nice people. Gives me all the news I need to know for the day. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Watch Eyewitness News Daybreak, covering the Carolinas. I do rely on them to get my day started. Let's grab some McDonald's. You buying? Why do I always have to buy? Because you're the one with the fancy job. And the fancy tie. You know what? There. Now you're the one who's buying. The tie did touch you last. Money's tight these days. Good thing there's McDonald's dollar menu. Get a juicy double cheeseburger or other favorites for only a buck. A murdered club owner found under a house who led police to the body. Masked gunmen come into a home and shoot the family dog what they were after inside. Plus, Tracy has your Panthers forecast. Find out if you'll need to take an umbrella after the game. Ammunition and lots of it for the big gun when they score down here 
They loaded up and fired. With no Vince Young, so that cannon's kind of quiet down there so far. Second down now, six yards to go. Texas trailing by seven. Just the inside handoff and they're trying to muscle their way toward the first down line. And again, Jamal Charles and our Hack Life game summary. And our first uh, quarter stats uh, look like this. Kirk, what do you make of that? I think Texas is trying to obviously run the football with their two talented running backs, trying to get it to the outside, take pressure off their young quarterback. And for Ohio State, it's been mixed, but they also are trying to go after the youth in the secondary with Terrell Brown out. It's not so much just Teddy Ginn, but we've seen Anthony Gonzalez very, very involved here early for the Buckeyes. From the shotgun, Texas also has run the, the option look third and short. And the Buckeyes swallow the youngster. It is Curtis Terry, the junior linebacker from Cleveland, Ohio. And here's what I see, the difference between Texas offense and Ohio State offense. You see Texas running out of the spread right there, going sideways, where Ohio State, Kirk, in that situation, can line up in the I formation and run downhill. One of the disadvantages of the spread offense right there, that short right. yardage. And Quinn Pitcock that time got the penetration to be able to get in there and force the Texas line back. Curtis Terry, one of many of those fine football players, played for Ted Ginn's father back in Glenville High School. Cleveland area. What a story that is. Greg Johnson in now to punt. And they're trying to keep it away from Ted. And it's inside the 20. It'll roll down about the 16 yard line. Well, some folks we'd have said we'd have a game up into the 50s. Beginning to look like we're going to be lucky to have one into the 20s. It's Saturday night football. It's one versus two. Okay, people, let's gather around. Gather around if you would, please. Let's bring it in and listen up. Yeah, let's powwow. This is Team Communication Week. I want you to think about what that means. You do your job so I can do my job. There's an exciting sound in travel. Southwest Airlines Ding. Get exclusive low fare sent directly to your desktop. Deals that are only available for a limited time and only by downloading Ding at Southwest.com. You are now free to move about the country. This lush expanse of green does more than beautify our world. Trees help clean the air of carbon dioxide, a major greenhouse gas. As North America's largest recycler, last year alone, Waste Management recycled enough paper to save over 41 million trees. From everyday collection to environmental protection, think green, think Waste Management. In all the world, there are a select few who at their very core are capable of incredible transformation. Under the most grueling conditions, they are shaped, hardened, sharpened, ready to stand among the most elite of all warriors, the few, the proud, the Marines. I'm Dallin Hart Jr. Welcome to Wrangler Jeans Company, a new generation of Wrangler. New fits, new comfort, new styles. Wrangler Jeans Company, a new generation of Wrangler. New fits, new comfort, new styles. Hey, I'm Dallin Hart Jr. Test drive a pair of jeans from Wrangler Jeans Company, and you can win your own test drive around the track with me. But I'm driving. Go to Wrangler.com to find out how to enter. Tuesday, the Dancing with the Stars season premiere on ABC. John Saunders back in New York with your prime time pulse over on ESPN. Georgia has just kicked a field goal to push it to 15 nothing. Meanwhile, LSU just continues to crush Arizona 38 to zip. Here's the score right now. Brent, back to you. We are back just past the top of the hour. 8 Central Time here in Austin, Texas. I'm Brent Musburger with Bob Davey at Kirk Herb Street and Lisa Salter. Nice to have you along with us tonight. One versus two. Ohio State leads it by seven. Troy Smith fires another completed pass. And you know, Troy Smith and 
Ted Ginn are such good friends. Uh, let's take a look at him. We've known each other since we were about six or seven years old. Uh, it started, you know, back home in the streets of Cleveland. Sure was like a brother. When I got down here, he took me under his wing, make sure that, you know, I got to my right spots, you know, as far as on the campus. It's a real deep, strong relationship, and, you know, hopefully we'll be able to be brothers, you know, our whole life. I really recommend the article on Ted Ginn Sr. in the issue ESPN the magazine. Uh, I wish Ted Ginn was on the cover instead of Terrell Owens, but that's a different story. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful story about an inner city school and what could be done for youngsters like uh, Troy Smith, who came from nowhere, and Ted Ginn Sr. basically adopted him and moved him in with the family. Now, Sr. had a game. There he is, folks. There is a guy who means so much. He started as a security guard at that high school I read back in Glenville. And I think now he's got 21 youngsters on scholarship tonight. And, uh, you know, congratulations to him and, uh, and men all across this country who work with youngsters. And there is Ted Ginn Jr. Second down and 10 now. Smith high incomplete they went for again that time Aaron Ross with the coverage Aaron Ross is the best cover corner on Texas he a lot of times is on an island against Ted again pretty good coverage but if you notice you can see Michael Griffin cheating just a bit to help out Aaron Ross in case Ted again moves to the middle of the field coach and having that safety is a nice security blanket for the corner Ross it's like having a, an eraser back there it eliminates any mistakes a corner may make third and ten Smith tries to pull out in trouble. So elusive. Incomplete. No one really had a chance to catch it, but Ginn had cut over in that direction. And Smith learning to fight another day. Gene Chizik, the defensive coordinator from Texas, making some adjustments, bringing pressure from a different, uh, different ways. And I think that's the adjustment that Gene Chizik, again, the defensive coordinator, trying to make here. He is a coach that has won 29 straight games as a defensive coordinator. What's interesting is he went Auburn undefeated. He also was, of course, last year at Texas, won a national championship, one of the best in the business. He was sitting down. One of the rare moments you see him sit down, and you saw him stand up in that coach's booth towards the end. Capasso hangs a beautiful punt. Aaron Ross back deep, fields it at the 17-yard line. And he is down. We'll take a break. 12-13 to go. Number one, Ohio State. Their first visit ever to Austin, Texas, and they lead it by seven. Most kids, they make a bad choice, they get grounded. Then there's kids, they make a bad choice. Those kids get sent here. You want to start a football team? Exactly. This Friday. Hey! You don't know how to spell Mustangs? You have got to be kidding me! One goal. What is this? A nose guard. Yeah! A second chance. If you accept this challenge, we're gonna be winners. The Rock. Good Iron Gang. Who are they? They accepted the challenge. Rated PG-13. is not good. What if I get hurt and can't work? Wait, I have Aflac. They give me cash to help pay for groceries, the car, even the cable bill. Lucky me. Aflac. Ask about it at work. Introducing Red Zone Deep Cleansing Body Wash, the active formula with micro beads. Cleans deep down to the pore. I thought you said he was a fan. Old Spice Deep Cleansing Body Wash. Nothing cleans deeper. 
Four teams, two coasts, one memorable Monday night. Joe Gibbs and Washington begin their championship run against former Redskin Brad Johnson and the Vikings. Then Charger star LaDainian Tomlinson visits Randy Moss and the Raiders. Vikings, Redskins, Chargers, Raiders, starting at 7 Eastern, a doubleheader season premiere of ESPN's Monday Night Football. Yes, indeed. The football season's upon us, and Monday Night Football moves to ESPN. Mike Tirico. Heard him there on the uh, promo for the two games. I spoke with Dick Vermeil, one of the broadcasters on the second game with Brad Nessler and Ron Jaworski. Looking forward to the uh, Chargers game out west with the Raiders. Hasn't done a game since he worked the Rose Bowl with me back when with uh, these Ohio State Buckeyes rallying to beat Arizona State. And here is Colt McCoy for Texas. Snapping one off incomplete. And now it's time for our Aflac trivia question. Let's see what the fellas came up with. What was the first regular season, number one versus number two matchup? Teams ranked in the top two now in both polls. Remember the AP poll? That goes back in the late 30s. And, uh, and then the coaches' poll came along. So what was the first, number one versus number two matchup? Second down and 10. Corners soften up. McCoy throws in underneath him, but well short of the first down here, Kirk. And right now, let's check in with Matt Weiner. Well, Brent, Florida State is on the comeback against Troy. They have just 28 yards rushing. They've gone to the air. Drew Weatherford, 29 of 42, 329 yards in that touchdown pass to Chris Davis. Tied at 17, Seminoles drive. The storm a little older. Can you imagine poor Jeff Bowden if they were to accidentally lose that game? <laughs> he would go from he's a hero to right back to being on the hot seat. I'm sure old Bobby wouldn't catch a little <laughs> flack for that. Well, he seemed to fall down to his son. I don't know. Troy would be a big one down <laughs> yeah. there. Third down and three. In complete. It's amazing here early in this game for Ohio State rotating numerous players in and out. Jim Tressel told me this week that his goal in the first half was to play 57 guys. 57 players and we've seen the offensive line the entire group rotating that time the entire second unit the defense was lined up they want to try to survive the first half by rotating players in and then go back to the starters in the second half. They're really concerned about the heat and humidity down in Austin. Greg Johnson left footed punter in and Missed again. He's back there waiting again. <laughs> Driving it. And here comes again. Swallowed at the 30 yard line. So Ohio State leads Texas by 7 0 here. And the Buckeye Band is with us. It's Saturday Night Football on ABC. It's gridlocked all the way into downtown. All four lanes are... strength a new level of quality introducing the GM hundred thousand mile warranty a new level of confidence with courtesy transportation and roadside assistance it's the best coverage in America from the biggest brand in America You're on the goalpost truck, you're on the car. I'm on lookout. Ferg, what are you wearing, spandex? Yeah, I got them out of my mom's drawer. It's very sexy. You think? No. Go, 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 go. This is going to look great in my yard. Bergwood? Is the strength of Allstate behind your favorite college football team? Jerry Springer, he may be the king of talk. Everything hurts. My hair hurts. But when it comes to his dancing, I don't have a prayer. Words can't describe it. 
Dancing with the Stars, live two-hour premiere, Tuesday at 8, 7 central, only on ABC. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. The low fare from here to there. It's on Southwest Airlines at southwest.com. General Motors, a new level of quality, a new level of confidence. And Aflac, ask about it at work. So on this night, the Stars have come out for number one versus number two, with number one leading it by seven. And there is LeBron James, who if he'd gone to college, to a lot of folks, it would have been Ohio State. He's just one of many sports and movie stars who are with us here tonight. Torrey Smith trying to air it out, going deep. And he overthrew Mr. Ginn. And that's hard to do, folks. We just talked about how Texas is trying to use a safety in the middle. That time, they were not able to get Michael Griffin to the middle. They are blitzing more and more on, t on Troy Smith to try to get the pressure to slow down him, his momentum. That time, he had time to throw. He had a one-on-one -on -one matchup that he wanted on the outside. Aaron Ross by himself, isolated against Teddy again. And if he puts a little bit more air on that football, that's a touchdown and a big play for the Bucks. Second and ten. Coming back with the power running game in Pittman. So our Aflac trivia question regarding number one versus number two. Both polls. When was the last time? Remember now, regular season. Not a bowl game. When was the last? The first one of the one versus twos. There it is right there. October 12, 1963. Daryl Royal. Won that one in the regular season. Went on a 1-1 in a bowl game against Navy and captured a national championship. Third down and six. Again, you have Gonzalez on the safety in the slot. Throwing in underneath the Rory Nickel, the first catch of the night by the tight end, and Robert Joseph, a backup safety, makes the stop. Good job here. The last two series by Texas. Again, Gene Chizik bringing a lot more pressure and mixing up the looks, just trying to get Troy Smith off balance a little bit and get his receivers and Troy to the point where they don't have quite the rhythm that they had there in the first quarter. The pass up punting and Ross is back deep. Boy, he's got a big leg, doesn't he? At the 22-yard line. And uh, let's check in now with Matt Weiner on a in-game Sports Center report, Matt. All right, Brent. Florida State has stormed back to take the lead against Troy after an interception. Joe Surratt, the fullback from four yards out. The Seminoles still only have 48 yards rushing in this game, but they do lead Troy by a touchdown inside two minutes. I'll tell you what, fear of embarrassment <laughs> sometimes <laughs> is the greatest motivator, and I think that's the Seminoles right there. And Troy might have gotten a little nervous there <laughs> thinking about what they were about to do. Got to wonder about the the horn struggling here with Colt McCoy. Where he completed a pass to Swede. Short of the first down marker. And tonight's area of coverage brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. As you look down on our sold out scene here. Texas Memorial Stadium. They're going to enlarge it even more. The bottom part there. They're going to tear it all out at the end of this season. Close it in. Have some more big old luxury boxes for these Texans who love this football team down here. And how about that big Godzilla Tron, that giant scoreboard we see right <laughs> there in that the end zone? Biggest in the world. But I tell you what, I've been in this state enough. AM next year, Texas AM, <laughs> will build one two square feet bigger. <laughs> <laughs> they better worry about beating the home. <laughs> oh, 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 
Oh, boy. I'm going to tell you that right now. Boy. That's getting a little long down there. That Charles in there at the running back. Uh, now, let, now, let me ask you this. When you, what, what was your record as a defensive coordinator against the Horns? Now, I know you know what it is. <laughs> so I'm going to let you say it because I don't want to say it now. Nine yeah. and one, I believe. Where was well, it? I don't want to correct you, but it actually was ten and one. Really? Yeah. I didn't give you credit for the tenth one, huh? I was wondering when that's, you were going to get to that. That's when the Aggies, the Aggies used to you dominate. You knew that was coming, series, Coach. Right? I knew it was coming. Uh, I thought you'd get it on earlier. I mean, that record. <laughs> you want me to open the night with a record. Oh, exactly. They're down now, and uh, Derek Loki in for Selvin Young. There's the defensive tackle for the first time as the road grader, and they run off his block and get the first down. Folks, you have got to see number 96. He's a starting there. He's coming back off the field. He's a road grader in these short yardage situations. He was a high school fullback, and uh, he just loves it. He said one day to Coach, Coach Brown, you got to just hand me the ball. <laughs> and he says you better pick up a fumble if you want the football. <laughs> <laughs> Their version of the fridge. He didn't pick up a big block there, but Texas did pick up a first down. And now you start to wonder, can they get Selvin Young and Jamal Charles back involved in the offense and get him going here? Yeah, I want to see if Colt McCoy can throw the ball down the field. It doesn't seem like he's thrown a ball more than five yards all night. There's a young man on the sideline who can throw it down the field. Jevin Sneed is his name. This time he goes down and complete. And he's saying, keep young Mr. Sneed over there on the sideline as he gets it to Selvin. Well, that's what Bob Davey just called for, and that time they protected off of the play action. But what I like to see is the ball is thrown up in the air, and it's a great job of adjusting back to the back to the football by Selvin Young. The ball is underthrown, but Selvin Young as a running back, running a wheel route that right down the sideline, recognized the ball was underthrown, came back against Ohio State's top cover corner, Malcolm Jenkins, and made a nice play. Charles in after the 29-yard game. Remember the Horns at one time in this game had a first and goal from the seven and turned it over. Spinning, battling his way across the 35-yard line. Well, the, the timing of the pass downfield was perfect to try to just mix it up and to slow down the pressure from Ohio State's defense. Ohio State has an aggressive defense. Their whole plan tonight was to try to get into the head of Colt McCoy, making his first start in this big a game. They wanted to try to confuse him, see if they could rattle him with a variety of looks. And anytime he can get a big completion like that to slow them down, that's going to help them run the football again. Second down, keeping it on the ground. Across the 30-yard line, but short of the first down. Stopped by Laurinaitis, who's had a big game defensively for the Buckeyes. Number 33, forced the turnover inside the five-yard line. If you just joined us, Texas threatening. It was first and goal, then a pass interference call against Ohio State. Laurinaitis punched it out, and Donald Washington returned it down the sideline. And if Vince Young was at quarterback, I would say quarterback draw right now, but that's not Vince Young. Instead, it is Selvin Young who reaches out. And let's check in with Lisa. Well, Brent, there's some folks here tonight who think that Colt McCoy is a hero no matter what he does here tonight. The McCoys were at their lakefront home in Graham, Texas on Memorial Day when they heard screams across the lake. And it was pitch black outside. Still, Colton's dad hopped into the water and swam 300 yards to the other side. That's where they found Patina Harrington and her husband, Ken, who was having a seizure. Now, another neighbor had already called 911, so Colt ran a quarter of a mile up the hill to let paramedics know where to go. The Harringtons are here tonight. Ken is doing just fine. But Tina says that Colt McCoy saved her husband's life. And I asked him about it, and he said, I didn't do anything that anyone else wouldn't have done. Brent? Yeah, he's a real American hero story, isn't it, uh, Lisa? Wonderful, wonderful story. Hands the ball <laughs> off. And, uh, so nice to see uh, Ken over there and uh, wearing the quarterback's number. And uh, I believe he went to school right here at Texas. And, uh, and yeah, he's the first to jump off uh, Vince Young's uh, bandwagon. He says Colt McCoy is his all-time favorite Texas quarterback, and understandably so. Nice to see you here tonight, sir. Second down and 11. You look in that helmet at Colt McCoy. He looks like he's about 12 or 13 years old, doesn't he? There's Pops over on the sideline.
Hit on the release. Got it off in time complete for a big time throw under duress. Pulled in by Lima Swede. Great concentration by the quarterback there because Colt McCoy, I don't know if he realized that Curtis Terry was coming from his blind side, but he hurried just enough to get the ball off and he threw it to a position where Lima Swede had a great body position on the corner, great throw, and a great job of just blocking out that pass rush coming towards him. And no one liked that throw any more than the Harringtons. First down and 10. Coming back with the young running back and uh, jumped in the middle in there. Jamal Charles is hit by David Patterson, one of the fine defensive tackles. Those two defensive tackles, uh, depending on how they do this year, Quinn Pittock and David Patterson, they'll play Sunday football. But uh, the pros are looking to see if they, if they, so they like to say, empty their bucket on every play, those two. And, and not many people would have thought Ohio State with nine new starters on defense will be pitching the shutout right now with three minutes left in his first yep. half. There's Laurinaitis. He's keyed it. Number 33. Selvin is back and running back off to the quarterback's right. Bounces. Out of bounds. This is across the 10 yard line and remember the last time that the horns marched in to the red zone Kirk. this happened well they had an opportunity early in this football game and it was Billy Pittman making an effort trying to extend the ball to try to pick up the first down and James Laronite has charged the ball loose with a big hit Donald Washington picked it up and went the other way kind of a turning point in this game let's see this time if Texas can capitalize now on third down getting inside the 10 yard line third and six for the horns and at some point, Lima Swede at six foot five up here at the top of the screen has to enter into the mix. Hit again on the release. Incomplete. And McCoy had penalty flag thrown on this hit. It's back by the quarterback. Against Ohio State. Automatic first down. Jay Richardson on a little stunt coming into the inside slips through. I think it might have been helmet to helmet that time with Jay Richardson hitting Colt McCoy. Wow. Definitely was not a late hit. It I don't, had to be helmet to helmet, if anything. I don't see that. I didn't see any helmet to helmet. I didn't see him leading with the helmet or using the helmet as a weapon. It definitely, it definitely was not a late hit roughing the quarterback. And as you know, these are not reviewable, but let's take a close look at this again. Well, that's, that's I don't a, see how you can call that. That is a questionable call. I mean, at some point he has full pads on, right? It is contact on the quarterback. And you're a defensive uh, coach, and you're right, but you, you made a good point. You have to lower your head to and make contact with an opposing player's head to be able to have that called against you. First and goal. But the courage by this kid, amazing. Charles is his running back, 25, short of the end zone. Can you imagine being Colt McCoy? We talked about him growing up in this state, but think about the shoes that he's trying to fill. Vince Young, one of the best quarterbacks to ever play, not only for Texas, maybe in college football, and this is his first big test for the number two team defending national champions playing the number one team in the country. Greg Davis told us that when they came out of the spring, these two quarterbacks, Jevin Sneed and he, were dead even. When they came back in the fall, every coach knew it was McCoy's job. That's how familiar he was with the offense. Being a coach's son helped him tremendously understand the offense. Rolls pocket right, backside throws. Got a touchdown, Texas. Colt McCoy hits Billy Pittman, and they're an extra point away from a tie. A 13-play drive. Richard freshman Colt McCoy. And remember the licks he took during this drive. Boy, a 13-play drive here. Very, very important for Texas before we get to halftime to get some momentum created. And how about Billy Pittman? Made the fumble at the other end of the field, comes back and has a touchdown opportunity for the Longhorns. 
And it goes back to one thing as Johnson ties it for the extra point. Let us not forget that personal foul penalty. Was it helmet to helmet? Is that why the referee called it and gave them a first down and the Horns take advantage of it? And there's Colts biggest fans, the Harrington family. What a great moment. If there were a store in your town called Peace of Mind, would you pay it a visit? Across America in towns big and small, there is such a place, New York Life. It starts with our values of financial strength, integrity, and humanity, and continues with our agents. So look for us in your town. You may already know our people, and we are confident that peace of mind is why New York Life is the company you keep. We're back to see what happens when you don't use degree. Odor versus Bert meeting her parents for the first time. And here comes the odor now. Oh, and the ref breaks it up. He should have used degree deodorant. Its body responsive formula prevents odor from existing all day. Playing catches fire, you got three choices. Stay in it and burn with it all the way to the ground. You can jump from several thousand feet. Or you can take the quick and painless way out. It's all right to be a little nervous before a fight. Fight's hopping in. They don't shoot at you. Flyboys. Rated PG-13. Only in theaters September 22nd. It's a long and perilous journey from inspiration to reality. Best to bring along a guide. I'm Matt Weiner back in New York. Here's our vote for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the day. Florida State struggling with Troy, but Geno Haynes with the big pick there to vote for your Pontiac game-changing performance. Just log on to ESPN.com, keyword Pontiac. Jimmy Haycock, fine co-defensive coordinator, working his troops over there on the sideline after they came off the field. As Colt McCoy and the Horns drive in to tie this just inside of two minutes. Ted Ginn back deep. They kick it away from him. Picked up by Gonzalez. And he is down short of the 35 yard line with 145 left on it. You know, we go back to that penalty and we think about it. It is an automatic penalty on helmet to helmet. Now, I want you two to watch this carefully and tell me if it's helmet to helmet. I say yes. I think it's helmet to helmet by the technicality of the rule. But if I'm coaching right now, Jay Richardson, I don't know what else I tell him to do You're a as a defensive coach. How, how, do you, how would you coach that? How would you coach him to do anything differently there? I wouldn't. Okay. We know where you stand. First down and 10 for Troy Smith under pressure bounces away beautifully and steps out of bounds at the 37 yard line. The bottom line is Texas had the opportunity after they caught the break and they capitalized Colt McCoy coming of age right in front of our eyes four for four on that 13 play drive giving Texas a very very important touchdown here to get the crowd back into the game and to get his confidence up feeling as if Texas can do some things on offense with him throwing the football very much in, in charge Troy Smith with the wristband. Pittman goes out of the backfield. Steps up against the pressure, fires to the middle, and to the 40-yard line. And it's Brian Robisky, his second catch of the night. And Young, and there's a penalty flag, so hang on now. So another big blow against the Buckeyes. If I'm Gene Chizik and I'm trying to stop Jim Tressel. Holding, 75 offense. 10 yard penalty, still second down. They're gonna Alex Boone. They're gonna have to make some adjustments at halftime because it's become very obvious Ohio State trying to attack, not, not necessarily with Teddy Ginn against Aaron Ross. They're still taking their shots there, but it's not only Anthony Gonzalez, 
It's Brian Hartline. It's, it's Brian Rabisky. They're going to the second, third, and fourth receivers with matchups to their advantage against safeties and against the younger corners. Here is the statistic of the first half, ladies and gentlemen. Five penalties against the Buckeyes, none against the Longhorns. And you can look at that both ways now. Second down and 17. Ray Small, the it's freshman. Bust right here. Complete. Gonzalez to the 40. And that is about four yards short of the first down. Ohio State with all three timeouts remaining. Little surprise, they don't use a timeout right now and just settle down on a key third and fourth. Texas is confused. That time a complete bust in their coverage to give them a shot here at third down. And Ginn gives them a first down, working against Ross. Very, very dangerous to leave a corner, as even as talented as Aaron Ross by himself, when a Ohio State offense is in hurry up because if Teddy Ginn were able to slip just one tackle, he's going 50 yards for a touchdown. Timeout has been called. So the Buckeyes, the Buckeyes use a, uh, use a timeout. So we look at this game and uh, and how it has unfolded and a very low scoring first half. We've got 28 seconds remaining a touchdown apiece. Uh, the horns were turned away Kirk and Bob uh, early by that fumble when Lauren I just uh, punched it out. But uh, but what's your feeling here about what we see? Well I think what happens here for Ohio State is very very important for both sides. I thought Texas gained some momentum by finally being able to sustain a drive and put it into the end zone to tie the game. It got the stadium alive. It got the crowd more involved. And I think it created some confidence here for Texas that they needed before they got to halftime. But they've got to stop Ohio State here. Yeah, and I look at it. It's a 7-7 game, but there's been a lot more plays, a lot more entertaining than what you think a 7-7 football game would give you. But I'll tell you what, guys, we got a big-time game here tonight now. Oh, really? I like it. <laughs> I like it. His nickname is Scoop. Oh, You're, yeah. <laughs> where did you stay this week? Where did you stay? Where did I stay? Hey, yeah, where did you stay, Kirk? I, uh, but you were, huh? Somebody said you four. were four seasons. <laughs> I stumbled in. I stumbled in there. There was a mistake with the travel department, and I stumbled in with it. <laughs> I don't want, want that mistake. First down and ten now. Oh, my rascals. All right, here's Troy Smith. Fire, got it open. Gonzalez grabs another one across the 30-yard line. Great grab by number 11. And the Buckeyes hurrying up. 22 seconds on that 23-yard gain. Ohio State once again. Nice little decoy disguising by Anthony Gonzalez. Ohio State feels that Teddy Ginn gets all the attention, but their best, most complete receiver is Anthony Gonzalez. He found a nice seam in the zone. But I've got to ask you, what coverage was that I mean Texas has had some gaping holes in that secondary I think I think they're confused these last three or four plays there's been a lot of confusion you could see the communication with Texas in their defensive backfield where they're trying to get on the same page and Ohio State mixing up formations mixing up personnel and I think that's this time confusing this defense but Anthony Gonzalez has been all over the field and he's been able to take advantage of the youth in the tech in the Texas secondary Terrell Brown of course is out of this game and it's been up to Brandon Foster and Ryan Palmer and even the safeties here they've not not been able to stay up with number 11 and I don't think there's any question Troy Smith's go-to receiver is number 11 Anthony Gonzalez that is his safety net right there it was last year, Santonio Holmes. Teddy Gim gets a lot of the attention because of his speed, and he's a great receiver. But it's a nice compliment to have Anthony Gonzalez on the other side. So here we go now, 22 seconds. Our guys have one timeout remaining. Assistant coach Gene Chizik's defense gets set. From the 29 yard line. Throwing deep, Ginn runs it in, touchdown, Ted Ginn, and he beat Ross. Brent, when we came over to the walkthrough, Coach, uh, myself, and, and you, and 
We had a chance with Lisa to talk to the Ohio State players. One of the things that Troy Smith told me was he has a lot more freedom at the line of scrimmage to make a check. And he, when he sees Teddy Ginn in this game one-on-one, -on -one, he has the flexibility to turn it loose. And he made a check there at the line of scrimmage because he saw Teddy one-on-one -on -one against Aaron Ross and went right by him for the touchdown. Perfect throw by Troy Smith. And Petri nails the extra point. The thing you're going to notice right here, Ohio State puts three receivers into the boundary. They leave Ted Ginn to the wide side of the field. It clearly defined the coverage for Troy Smith and just straight man-to-man -man bump and run. And the mistake right there that the corner Aaron Ross made, Kirk, he looked back to the ball with Teddy Ginn out ahead of him. And that's a no-no. And the speed. We keep bragging about Anthony Gonzalez. We keep bragging about how good a player he is on the other side of, of Teddy Ginn. It's because Teddy Ginn is so explosive that it takes the attention away from Anthony Gonzalez. But we talk about Talk about his go-to guy. At the end of the day, it's the speed in the backyard ball between Troy Smith and Teddy Ginn. You know, Kirk, I want to go back to uh, something that uh, Bob Davis said earlier, that Troy Smith is a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate, and he can really step up here tonight. Yeah, I mean, this stage builds that foundation even stronger, doesn't it? I was wondering when you're going to mention that H word because I see the same thing you do. You had him in the Fiesta Bowl against Brady Quinn. And the winner of that game became the front runner coming into this year. Those are the top two candidates for the Heisman. But this oh, stage, oh, hold on now, hold on. Adrian whoa, Peterson, whoa, whoa, whoa. Adrian. Adrian, Adrian, with that right offense, there. without a passing game. Well, oh, you can't eliminate the great uh, running. Back. I love him. He might be the most talented player in college football. Now. But I don't know if he's going to get know enough. I know you Get enough yardage. Whoa, now we come on now. I don't think he's going to get enough yardage this year. Where is Lee Corso when I need? That's a hunt kickoff. You talk about a swing of momentum. Texas looked like they had a chance to tie it, come up with a stop, get to halftime, 7-7. Seven seven, and Ohio State comes right back, puts six points on the board, and now they're going to hit the showers with the, se the seven-point lead and the momentum. First and ten, Texas, point. You talk about Troy Smith. A lot of people ask, why do coaches give guys second chances? I think this is why. There's no question Jim Tressel has given him two or three opportunities. He had some off-field problems early in his career. This guy's already graduated from Ohio State. He's a great team leader. That's why you give guys second chances in your football program. End of the first half. Ohio State with that late touchdown pass to Ted Ginn from his dear friend Troy Smith puts him up. And Ginn took it to the house. Let's go to Lisa. Thanks, Frank. Coach, what went right on that last drive? They thought they were going into halftime tied up. What went right on that last drive for you? You know, our kids practice a lot, those two-minute drills, and Troy made a lot of plays. Pass protection was good, and, you know, we got single coverage for Teddy, and whenever we get single coverage for Teddy, we have a good chance. Now that penalty play that, that kept their touchdown drive alive, the, the official explained it to you. What did he tell you? He said he's protecting the quarterback, which I understand. Good luck second half. Troy Smith throws for 219 yards and two touchdowns. And right now, let's go to John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie in New York. Take it away, John. I wonder why Brent would give you the I extra pot. He called that Hail Mary sure did. as well. But I'll give you credit. You made the call on our pregame show today saying that Gonzalez would have a big game as well as Ginn. In balanced coverages, the safety is going, going to be helping on Ted Ginn's side. Gonzalez is the guy that's going to be one-on-one -on -one most today. But like we saw at the end, Again, one-on-one -on -one coverage, big play guy. It was interesting to see in the course of the game how Ohio State started getting blitzed, their Texas defense is blitzing, and then got him out of sync, got Troy Smith out of sync, and he adjusted as it went on. They got in the two-minute drill and made plays against the blitz. Speaking of adjusting, the whole pregame, all week leading up to this game, we've asked, asked the question, Colt McCoy, will he be able mm -hmm. to handle this? Well, Colt McCoy, I think, has answered everybody's questions about that. He's a smooth, poised young man. He has a lot of confidence going to halftime. So I really believe coming out in the second half, Texas's defense has to match what Colt McCoy's done with his offensive unit. We've seen Ohio State's defense, and they played better than everybody thought they could. All right, stick around. When we return, we'll come back with some highlights you will not want to miss. Florida State and Troy, a struggle. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC.
blocks traffic. It's gridlocked all the way into downtown. All four lanes are... level of strength, a new level of quality. Introducing the GM 100,000 mile warranty, a new level of confidence. You're gonna get what you need. With courtesy transportation and roadside assistance, it's the best coverage in America from the biggest brand in America. Welcome back to the much-anticipated matchup between the Eagles and the Bulldogs. The Eagles to receive. Let's go down to the field and get a real quick report from Meg Shipley. Meg? The Eagles are hoping their potent offense can penetrate the Bulldogs' number three ranked defense. Now, um, uh, I, I believe we're seeing some parachutes coming down. I, Mike, are you seeing this from up there? Absolutely, Meg, and I have no explanation for what's going on right now, but... Uh, cows are parachuting onto the field. I'm not sure if this is some kind of a protest stunt or something. Two cows have landed on the field now. Now there's a third cow headed for the stands. It's actually headed right towards a burger. Look out! Oh my. The burger vendor is down. That's going on the highlight reel. Try our new hand spun milkshakes in vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, and cookies and cream. Get rid of the things you don't like about credit cards. The hype, the confusion. What if you could start over, and this time, do it right? This is ESPN on ABC. John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie for you here. We're at halftime, and Ted Ginn Jr. has been the difference maker in this one. 14 to 7, Ohio State has the lead in that contest. Now, you had to wonder about Florida State Miami today. They played on Monday night, of course. Florida State wins a very, very tough defensive minded battle. They have to come back now just five days later and face Troy. So they're thinking, we can roll out of bed and win this game. It was the Trojan horse that did more damage here. Pokebook here, deflected and caught by Gary Banks. It was a 10-10 game. Weatherford goes 16 yards to Chris Davis to tie this game at 17. With six minutes to go in the fourth quarter, they finally tie the game up, and then the big fullback's able to carry it in for the touchdown. And, and to really to address your question, John, here's a Miami offense that on Monday night went against the Florida State defense. Mm -hmm. It was unbelievable, and they had 134 yards. Today in this ballgame, Troy comes out, and their offense has 284 yards against Florida State's defense. I thought Florida State's defense was unbelievable, but Doug, as players, you and I both know, parity's close in college football, and, man, it's hard to get that tank filled up again that short of time. It's an emotional win for you. You're patting yourself on the back for a couple of days saying, oh, we beat Miami. And all of a sudden you say, oh, shoot, it's game day. That's right. And if, if Troy doesn't throw two interceptions in the last five minutes of the game, Florida State doesn't win. That was unbelievable. It would have been one of the biggest upsets in college football history. All right, Penn State facing Notre Dame today. We're not sure about the Irish because the last week against Georgia Tech, they were in a struggle. Well, we're sure of them now. Brady Quinn had three touchdown passes. This one of them is he stands deep in the pocket and tosses it across the middle. Their defense did a great job as well in the contest. You can soon see the sack here. And then Zibikowski picks it up and goes 25 yards. And, and Anthony Morelli there making a mistake. It, but it really was. It came down to Brady Quinn again on offense, making a lot of plays when Penn State didn't. Georgia and South Carolina. Steve Spurrier had no problems against Georgia when he coached at Florida. Danny Ware, though, takes it in from 10 yards out. And then Mike Davis gets tackled in the end zone for a safety. And big, big guy couldn't handle nothing. that. He couldn't handle that defensive lineman, could he? 50 to nothing. Georgia has the lead. Now, this one is a blowout. LSU facing Arizona. The defense getting it done as well. Jonathan Zenon steps in, returns this one 41 yards for the touchdown. But Jamarcus Russell, five yards to Jacob Hester. 
Russell looked great all day today throwing the ball, and LSU was romping. But Arizona was as bad as LSU was good. They couldn't get a yeah. snap from center, throwing interceptions, missing field goals, mm. everything. All right, what did we find out about Notre Dame today? Are they that good, or is Penn State not as good as we I, thought I, they might be? That We probably found out that Georgia Tech's pretty darn good good right. and did a good job against Notre Dame's offense and we also probably found out that Penn State may not be what we thought they were. Anthony Morelli and that offense at Penn State had some chances in the game early on when Notre Dame wasn't scoring to have some points on the board. They didn't do it. We sat here and we said, hey, Notre Dame's going to come yeah. back and pound them in the second half and they did. That's what happened. Second half, the intensity level picked up for Notre Dame. They became more physical. We didn't think they were real physical in the first half, Notre right. Dame. Second half, they got physical as well as making the plays. And Penn State looked pretty much flat the whole day. All right, continuing with Florida facing Central Florida. And this one, Urban Meyer. Hey, am I going to have a little cakewalk in this? I'm right number seven. Chris Leak. 10 yards to Dallas Baker. At this point, it's a 27 to nothing lead. And you know, I watched game day and Lee Corso said this was going to be a closer than the experts think. I don't know. Leak here, 25 yards to Andre Caldwell. 34 to nothing is the score there. Now, Air Force and Tennessee. You expect to blow up? Tennessee had a big win last week against Cal. Well, Eric Ainge looked pretty good today. Real solid, all day long, throwing the ball, even though the game is still close in the fourth quarter. Ainge was throwing the ball with precision all day long. He's looking like a big-time quarterback. That one is not over. Minnesota against Cal. Cal is a team that Tennessee beat up on last week. Nate Longshore to Deshaun Jackson. 48 yards this one covers as Cal leads Minnesota 21 to 14. Nate's redeeming himself for last week. I'll tell you what, he looked real sharp today. Over 200 yards passing in the first half. Last week, big struggle. Miami also had to play on Monday night. They get Florida AM this time around. Charlie Jones, five yards on this run, 14 to nothing. Kyle Wright also had a good day. And you know what? Wright, Wright just following up really what he had last week. Can you imagine though Miami going out and having fresh legs against FAMU? No, I mean, I didn't either. not too much. But I'll tell you what, this is the last year of the agreement between Miami and Florida State to play that Monday night game. I'm not betting on them <laughs> renewing that deal. Certainly not Bobby Bowden. Stick around. When we come back, we will have more of the day's scores, highlights, big hits, touchdowns, and more, plus a preview of Monday Night Football. Now, time to go back to our ESPNU City College Vault. Last season, Texas traveled to Ohio State for their first ever meeting with the Buckeyes. After their defense kept it close in the second half, Vince Young connected with Limus Swede with just over two minutes remaining to take the lead. The Longhorn defense preserved the victory when Brian Robeson recovered a Justin Zwick fumble late in the game. Oh, I stole his password online and hello. Makeover. <laughs> I got hair extensions plumped at the lips and snapped the hottest headshots. Hollywood, here I come. Tell me what you think. Unbreak my heart, say you love me again. Undo this hurt that you caused when you walked out the door and you walked out of my life. City Identity Theft Solutions. Talk to a real person to help get your life back. Free when you get a city credit card or Citibank account. We serve a place as big as it is diverse. Maybe that's why we're so single-minded in our purpose, to help transform individuals into the thinkers, dreamers, and leaders of tomorrow. We're Texas. What starts here changes the world. The game face. Everyone is different. Some are powerful. Some are focused, and some are calm in any situation. Big 12 athletes never lose their game faces. They travel with them throughout their lives. You see them on doctors performing surgery, lawyers presenting arguments, and on scientists making discoveries. The game face is how champions prepare for a challenge, no matter the arena. This 
is ESPN on ABC. John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie. Time now for the no huddle highlights. We begin with a team that dropped in the polls despite the fact that they won last week. Steve Slate was himself again. Well, the question today was whether or not he'd get 300 yards rushing. This young man and this football team just getting ready for the long run. Syracuse against Iowa. This one was not supposed to be a game. It was. Pass interference is going to be called down here. They roll the ball at the 24. When pass interference is a highlight, this is an ugly game, all right? <laughs> Big field goal by Syracuse to tie it in the last seconds to send it to OT. That was Patrick Shadle in overtime. Now Syracuse gets another call down at the line. They still can't get it in after eight tries. Eight tries against that Iowa defense, and they held up. Clemson against Boston College, another game that went to overtime. This point after was blocked, and it was key because Boston College would come back Whitworth, Whitworth rather, on the six-yard touchdown run. It's tied at 33. Now the kicker just has to hit it. Oh, just and, put it through. And yeah. Hell Mary Flutie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a big, big win against a ranked opponent at home for Boston College. Nebraska facing Nickel State. Zach Taylor got it going today. 42 yards here to purify. Now, you know, I understand that, you know, y'all laugh at me. It's the nickel and dime state that they're playing today. But the bottom line is Zach Taylor's getting better. He's completing passes. Now the question is, can that black shirt defense, can they match what Taylor's doing on offense? Because we have not seen a Nebraska defense really dominate anybody in quite a while. And they have USC next week in primetime right here on ABC. USC this week. Steve Smith, Patrick Turner, a couple receivers for USC this week, making comments about John David Booty, a quarterback, about how good he is. He takes more chances than Matt Leinart. He's got a stronger arm than Matt Leinart. They believe this guy's the leader. We talk about a team that reloads saying all the right things about their quarterback, and he did impress me at Arkansas the way he handled himself. But again, John David Booty on his backside is what the Black Shirts <laughs> have to hope for at Nebraska, or they're not going to stay in this ball game. All right, now this weekend, ESPN's coverage of the 2006 National Football League season starts. With a preview, here's Chris Berman. We're getting ready to kick off a brand new season of Sunday NFL Countdown. Can Bill Parcells and Terrell Owens make it work in Big D? Michael Urban weighs in, and so will a special guest who knows something about relationships. If these two want to have a healthy relationship, two things are going to have to happen. Win and win. Carson Palmer is back. Will it be better than ever? Tom Jackson visits with the Bengals quarterback. Colts vs. Giants. Manning vs. Manning. Who'll win this historic battle? Mike Ditka won't hesitate to pick sides. Join us at 11 a.m. Eastern for Sunday NFL Countdown on ESPN. Now, let's check in with Mike Tirico and the Monday Night Football crew. Mike. Chris, thank you. Here in Washington, a lot of excitement. Redskins making the playoffs last year, but Tony truly has been a bummer of a summer. Horrendous. They're 0-4 in preseason games. Their first string offense gets a grand total of zero points. The good news for them on Monday night, Joe Gibbs told us today that Clinton Portis, who got hurt in the first preseason game, he will play. Vikings looked a little bit better the preseason, but of course, Brad Childress, their new head coach, is one of 10 new ones in the National Football League. He inherits a team that almost made it to the playoffs. And oh, by the way, oldest starting quarterback in the National Football League goes Brad Johnson. That's game one of our doubleheader. Game two will be in Oakland as LaDainian Tomlinson and the Chargers take on Randy Moss and the Raiders. Monday Night Football season premiere doubleheader Monday at 7 Eastern on ESPN. Mike, thanks a lot. This is ESPN on ABC. Finish clean. Stay cool in the heat. Gatorade rain. This is not what smart travelers do. But this is. Go to thrifty.com. Compare our cars. Compare our rates. You'll always find our absolute lowest rates at thrifty.com. We guarantee it. Thrifty.com. Book smart. Joey Lawrence, Mario Lopez. It's the battle of the Hollywood heartthrobs, and there's only one word to describe it. Whoa. Boo. 
Dancing with the Stars, live to our premiere, Tuesday, 8, 7 central, only on ABC. Sunday, September 24th. It's finally time for the season premiere. Will you marry me? I know it's been six months, but he could still come out of it, right? It's time. Does she know you killed your wife? To come clean. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I'm a Republican. The season premiere of Desperate Housewives, Sunday, September 24th at 9, 8 central, only on ABC. Air Force at Tennessee coming down, looking like they're going to tie the game. Ryan Williams goes in 31 to 30, but two point conversion with 135 left. Chad Hall is stopped, and that's where it remains now 31 to 30. Time now to go back to Austin and rejoin Chris Fowler and Lee Corso. Cool. All right, John, thank you. Wild Saturday here. Lee, we look forward to a good last 30 minutes. What a difference from a year ago. Ted Ginn held to just two catches by Texas a year ago. He's got four for 85, and Gonzalez, seven catches. Well, first of all, if you're Texas, you got to get this Colt McCoy to run the no huddle offense, run the option play, roll out and every once in a while. Now, if you're Ohio State, just do this. Will yourself a favor? <laughs> get number 10 the ball every time. Troy Smith has had 219 yards, two touchdowns. He's averaged 17 yards per completion in the first half. The guy's having a Heisman night right here, one versus two. Troy Smith is the difference between these two teams. And in the Longhorn secondary, I agree with their buddy yeah. Kirk. There's some confusion back there. Remember, Marcus Griffin, the starting safety, knocked out an injury. Yeah. So already with Brown out, Griffin injured, some things to sort out in the back end for the Longhorns in the second half. And the second half will be coming right up from Austin, Texas. After these messages, a word from your ABC stations. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Your flight attendants will be coming through the cabin shortly, offering snacks for sale for $5. Also available, in-flight magazines for $3. If you'd like to rent a pillow or blanket, that'll be $2. You need to use the restroom, that fee's $4. If you need anything else, feel free to push that call button for a minimum fee of $1. How far are they gonna go? For 35 years, Southwest Airlines has offered low fares with no strings attached. You are now free to move about the country. I'll try to be a hero, man. This will all be over in five minutes. The best new show of the season is on ABC. The Nine premieres Wednesday, October 4th, after the season premiere of Lost, only on ABC. Must be about 2.30. Shell's using correction fluid to do a French manicure. Brandon's got himself another tricycle. And Adam will be attacked by killer bees in five, four, three, two. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like somebody missed snack time. Get back to your senses with a new way to snack. McDonald's Snack Wrap. Tender all-white premium chicken breast meat with lettuce, cheddar jack cheese, and ranch sauce and a soft flour tortilla. Try it for just $1.29. Nice nail, Cheryl. At Hendrick Lexus in Charlotte. Making great time, Captain. Oi, with a chicken ranch salad burrito. I can eat me salad while I keep one hand at the helm. I made the cook and his salad walk the plank, sir! All right. 
Taco Bell's new Chicken Ranch Salad Burrito. Marinated all-white meat chicken, crisp romaine lettuce, and a zesty avocado ranch dressing wrapped up in a flour tortilla. For the salad that lets you keep one hand on the wheel, think outside the bun. If it will stay dry for the Panthers tomorrow, tonight after the game. Masked gunmen come into a home and shoot the family dog what they were after inside. Plus, Tracy has your Panthers forecast. Find out if you'll need to take an umbrella after the game. Saturday night football on ABC and number one Ohio State striking with less than 30 seconds to go in the first half leads number two Texas by a touchdown. Welcome back everybody. I'm Brad Musburger with Kirk Herbstreit, Bob Davey and uh, Kirk that last touchdown pass. Uh, there were some interesting things. Well what I'm seeing right now are two even football teams competing. The only difference is Troy Smith. Troy Smith is 13 and 19 in the first half for 219 yards. Biggest play right before the half. Recognized one on one coverage with Teddy Ginn. And he makes the audible with the line of scrimmage with his hand. The gesture to the, with the hand indicates to Teddy again that it's one on one. And what I liked is how he looked the safety gripping off and then made the throw to the outside right for Teddy again to make the catch. And how about the maturation of Teddy again as a receiver? Watch this escape move right there as he beats the bump and run coverage by Aaron Ross. Last week, Troy Smith threw for 297 yards and three touchdowns. The first half tonight, 219 yards and two more touchdowns. Texas will get the ball to start against Smith and the Buckeyes. Selvin Young and Quan Cosby are back deep. Fielded on the bounce by Selvin. Down at the 20-yard line, our pack life. First half statistics look like this. And Bob, as you look at this, what jumps out off that page to you? What jumps out at me is the problems Texas has in the secondary trying to defend the pass of Ohio State. What doesn't show up in the stats is the poise of Troy Smith. We saw in this matchup a year ago, Vince Young take his team to, to into Columbus and play with such great poise. And now, a year later, we're seeing in the first half, very similar attitude from the Ohio State quarterback. From behind Colt McCoy, he has quarterback the entire game. Number 12, his second start. Hands it off to the running back, Charles. And let's check in with Lisa. What did uh, Coach Mac Brown have to say? Well, Brent, Mac Brown told me that he told his kids at halftime to keep your confidence. He said, look, guys, we came from behind last year at the Horseshoe. You came from behind at the Rose Bowl. You just got to stay in this and try to tie the game up in the first five minutes of the second half. I also asked him when he told us yesterday that he would not challenge anything until the fourth quarter, why he challenged that fumble in the first quarter. And he said, one of my kids said it was a bad call. It didn't come up, up on the replay I wanted to keep my challenge but it was such a critical time of the game that I thought I had to use it it was a mistake all right thank you Lisa handoff on the play and again first down strong run by Charles to the 31 yard line you know as I watch this football game we really haven't seen Jamal Charles number 25 explode yet but keep in mind he is a 10 100 meters I'm gonna make a strong statement I think the two fastest football players in the country on the field tonight with Ted Ginn and Jamal Charles if they're not too tired can we, can we maybe talk them into 100 yards after the ball game tonight <laughs> that would be this whole stadium would stay and watch that first and ten Picked off. Laurinaitis, who's had a monster night for the Buckeyes with the interception, and they're within striking distance again. First, you're going to get a chance to see what Colt McCoy sees right here from behind the quarterback. But how about James Laurinaitis? A game like this of this magnitude, Kirk, with this stage, this kind of game's changed young guys' lives. This guy tonight is. 
the, the big hit on the goal line yep. early in the game caused fumble, and now the big interception. And the thing, guys, it's the first mistake we've seen from the Texas quarterback, the young quarterback making his first start in the big game, and Laronitis has been all over the field. Colt McCoy didn't even see number 33. Now first and 10. Hand off to Pittman. Powers into the middle of that burnt orange defense and Derek Loki the nose man from Denton Texas and there he is talking to Greg Davis upstairs running down the mistake that was made on the field and I think this is key right now how does Colt McCoy bounce back last week in his first college game against North Texas it was easy we look at Greg Davis the offensive coordinator how resilient is Colt McCoy we've talked about that all day the adversity finally hitting him how does he respond? That's exactly right. And with all the pressure of Texas trying to come back on his shoulders. Second and eight. Backside. Down goes Smith. But strong enough to hold on to the football. Hit from behind by Robinson. And Brian Robinson, who himself dropped 15 pounds as the defensive end, you're going to see him coming from the backside. He beat Alex Boone, the 325-pound offensive tackle. The Kirk is speed over size. Speed and effort. What an amazing job by Robinson to come from the backside, to come down and not give up on the play to bring down Troy Smith. Third and 15. They're going to run for it with Pittman. Angling and short of the first down as Michael Griffin, one of the twins, alongside Marcus is the safety. When they played in high school, Michael, whom you're looking at, he was the quarterback. And how about the call on third and long? Jim Tressel comes with the little counter play. Pittman breaks it outside. There's no one out there for the offensive guard downing to block Sets up a makeable field goal right now for the Buckeyes. Aaron Petrie missed one on their first drive from 28 yards. This is 31. Different angle. Got this one. One of two. And that one from the left hash. Jim Trussell of the Buckeyes had three. Go up by 10 now. 17-7. Take advantage of the interception. flavors in every Dr. Pepper add up to so much taste. 23 is always on the tip of your tongue. So at the end of the 23rd quarter, it's all tied up 23-23. We'll be back after a brief 23-second timeout. Thanks, guys. Dr. Pepper and ESPN are giving you a chance to throw for a million dollars. Go to ESPN.com, keyword pepper, to enter. Because with 23 flavors in every Dr. Pepper, there's always more to it. September 12th, the sequel to the award-winning LEGO Star Wars video game is finally here. It's all the action of Star Wars combined with the fun of LEGO. LEGO Star Wars 2, the original trilogy video game. In stores September 12th. Rated everyone 10 and up. Oh, thank I you. Love I love your that curls. Curl. Ah! <laughs> oh, <laughs> Who's counting on your brakes today? Your brakes are too important to trust to just anyone. That's why you should come to Midas now. At Midas, brake pads or shoes are just $89.95 per axle installed. Be safe. Just the Midas touch. 
Four teams, two coasts, one memorable Monday night. Joe Gibbs and Washington begin their championship run against former Redskin Brad Johnson and the Vikings. Then Chargers star Ladanian Tomlinson visits Randy Moss and the Raiders. Vikings, Redskins, Chargers, Raiders, starting at 7 Eastern, a doubleheader season premiere of ESPN's Monday Night Football. And this ESPN production is available on ABC HD, presented by Dish Network. Ohio State 17, Texas 7. The linebacker who went to YZ High School, just outside Minneapolis, James Laurinaitis, with a huge night. His daddy, a professional wrestler, very popular back in the 80s and 90s, known as the animal of the Legion of Doom. And tonight, his son is a Legion of Doom. And uh, man, I tell you, Lisa, you found a. You found a guy who he can step pretty good down there now. Right? Emmett Smith now, he's pretty nimble. That's right, Brent, the NFL's all-time leading rusher. Uh, Emmett, you've been cutting a rug all summer. I'll get to that. But a couple of minutes ago, you said we're watching the national champion. I got to ask you, which one do you think? Washington, Texas, 2020. You said you think we're watching the potential national oh, yeah. champion. I, I which think, one? I think so. I mean, Ohio State definitely have the better ball club. We used to talk about the quarterback position and some of the other skill position. I mean, they kind of neutralize themselves. But the quarterback position is such a key role in, in this ball game. And I think Ohio State have the edge in that, in that category. Now I'm going to ask you about your dancing after this play. Yeah, we want to uh, hear about that. <laughs> so we'll come back down and. Uh, Right now, the heat is on young Colt McCoy, and uh, they give him a very comfortable pass, and let's go back to Lisa. All right, Emmett, we always knew that you were good on your feet, but you're a competitor in Dancing with the Stars this season. You've been training for five weeks. How's it been? It's been fun. It's been challenging. As you can see right here, you look at the video right now. I mean, I have to work hard to get good at it, and so uh, it's been fun, though. I've had a lot of, lot of uh, encouragement by, by Cheryl, my partner. Uh, she's been a great instructor. And so, you know, I've just been trying to take it in and soak up as much knowledge uh, as I possibly can. What advice did Jerry Rice give you? He told me it was going to be hard. He said, uh, Eve, be prepared to practice a minimum of three to six hours a day. And that I have been prepared to do. And so I've been having a good time doing it, loving it. And, uh, you know, it is hard at times. I'm learning the cha-cha. I'm learning the, the quick step. And so far, the quick step has been the hardest to learn. Can you show us something, Emmett? You got anything for me? Oh, no. Sure. Can you show me a step, anything? You know, I'm reserving all my steps for Tuesday night when I need America to call in and vote for me and Cheryl. So Now, you never danced when you scored a touchdown, so where did you get this ability you know, from? I've always had it. It's just that in my sport, it wasn't necessary. This is a dancing event, so it's every bit of necessary and it's every bit of required. So. Thank you very much, Thank Emmett. You. Good luck, Brent. Oh, I thought maybe Emmett wanted to go on for another minute with that promo. Then there's a lateral off to the I thought maybe, you know, I hate to interrupt you, Emmett, but there's a football game breaking out. Uh, that Selvin, uh, he picked up uh, 17 yards on, uh, on that. And uh, so uh, let me uh, just remind you that uh, Emmett will be dancing with the stars, and that's live Tuesday at 8, 7 Central, only on ABC. Big shoot to fill there. Jerry Rice performance. <laughs> Second down under the letter. Whatever you say. <laughs> there is that inside shuffle pass off to Charles. He's short of the first down. Larry Grant, the Juco All American linebacker, number six, says. Jim Trussell continues to use a lot of manpower down here in Austin. Mac, Mac jokingly said to me, there's one thing wrong with this game. We're not playing it at high noon. <laughs> the heat and humidity. <laughs> he said we got to play this game at night. Third down and four yards for the Horns, who trail it by 10. And that stat right there really helps the young quarterback, Texas' ability to run the football. But I think they're going to have to throw the football right here, Kirk, on third and four. Flared, picked up, nothing doing. And a nice read. Donald Washington was over there, and Antonio Smith. Antonio Smith actually read the play and went out with the running back. And the young quarterback hung his tailback. Selvin Young out a little bit right here. And you see Washington right there break on the football. Fortunately, Kirk, that ball wasn't jarred out of there. Antonio Smith has had a big night tonight for the Ohio State defense. He showed blitz, recognized that he thought the throw would go out to the flat, to the back, and got back over there to help Donald Washington out. Antonio, 
Antonio Smith, a great story, Texas. excuse me. First team charge timeout. So our first timeout uh, in the second half, and again, that's something that Mac Brown didn't want. He did not want a timeout used because the change in the timing rules, he wanted to take all three to the fourth quarter. So right now for the defending national champions and the favorites in this game, things are really not going their way. When Susie and I retire, we'll be taking trips like this whenever we want. It's a good thing we've been planning. At Pacific Life, giving you the right tools to help you meet your financial goals is what we're all about. As you look to the future, look to Pacific Life. Ask your financial professional about Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. You might have to decide who lives and dies out there. Expect the unexpected. I'm a rescue swimmer at heart. Wow, I bet you practiced that all morning. Oh! No matter what happens out there, you stay together. Lower me down! The Guardian. Rated PG-13. In theater September 29th. Pickup and SUV. Gasoline and E85 ethanol. Haul and tow. The all new 2007 Chevy Avalanche. The most flexible vehicle out there. Clear your inbox, clear your mind. The same email that's on your computer is now on your singular phone with one simple click. It's your email delivered. Get the new email ready Nokia phone for only $29.99. Singular, raising the bar. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines, the low fare from here to there. It's on Southwest Airlines at southwest.com. Chevrolet, America's brand. Chevy, an American revolution. Pacific Life, for insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. And Nike Gridiron. The Ohio State Buckeyes lost in the fourth quarter a year ago in Columbus. But right now here in Austin, Texas, they lead 17 to 7. After the timeout, Johnson and Ginn going to let this. I'll tell you, we've seen some outstanding punting on both sides here tonight. Two very, very powerful legs. Let's go to New York now and John Saunders. John. Well, Brent, it's time now for the prime time pulse. You can see Georgia right now over South Carolina. They push that lead to 18 0. Fresno straight over Oregon, 3 0. But it's early in that contest. That's your prime time pulse. All right, back to you. All right, John, and here at 17 7, the Buckeyes. Now, Fresno State hosting Oregon. There aren't many fellas that are willing to go in and play them. In their home territory. That will be one to keep an eye on as it unfolds here throughout the night. Pittman into the middle, and Bobino, who's been very solid at linebacker, makes the stop. Troy Smith is starting to gain a reputation for performing well in the big games. You can see tonight he's off to a great start. You go back to think about the way he played against Michigan twice, playing against Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl. Coming into this game, he's played his best in the big games, completing 69% of his passes with five touchdown passes and two touchdown runs with 377 yards of total offense in those big games. He continues that trend tonight in a big one, obviously, here in Austin. Second and eight. Pittman for the first down. A powerful running play. Now, Troy Smith, let's go back to a year ago because Justin Zwick do, drew the start in Columbus. 
And there are many, many fans around the Midwest who believe that if number 10 had been the starting quarterback that night and had played every snap, that they would have won the game. Now, Smith himself points out not so fast, my friends, because it was Zwick who threw the pass that the tight end dropped. And wasn't that a painful drop in the end zone? That might have been game, set, and match. Buckeyes win it. But Troy Smith has matured as an individual off the field as well as on. He was at the Elite 11 quarterback camp in California, and he made a tremendous impression on the youngsters out there. He stood in front of them and said, look, I made a mistake, and I paid for it. I took money when I shouldn't have. I want you fellas to listen now to somebody who went the wrong way, and don't you make that same mistake. It was a powerful, powerful speech, and I cannot tell you how impressive Troy Smith has become off the field around Columbus when you go talk to him and you look back to the days and you give Jim Trussell and this coaching staff so much credit for the maturation of Troy Smith and now Bob Davey would probably put him at the top of his Heisman ballot. <laughs> I think everybody in the world would right now. I got Trent, I got Brent casting my vote for me right here. <laughs> <laughs> He'll do that now. <laughs> we got a little flag time down there now. Ball start, 75 offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. I think Troy Smith has been the difference in the game because of the way he's been able to spread it around. Anthony Gonzalez early, Ted again had the big play before the half, and you look at the results, but I think it's the leadership, something you can't always see are the intangibles of a quarterback on the road, number one against number two because he has a calming effect on the rest of the team, not just the offense, but the entire team. Second and 15, and this is well short of the, the first down. That's Brian Robisky, his third catch of the night. I'll tell you something I've really been impressed with is just the overall team speed of how Ohio State has matched up against Texas. We knew Ohio State had some individual guys that could run Kirk, but just as a team, I thought Texas would have the speed advantage. I have not seen that tonight. Well, especially on defense. We, you knew with so many players returning on offense, Ohio State was pretty gifted on that side of the ball. But the way their young defense has flown around tonight has been very impressive. Third and nine. Incomplete. Buckeyes will punt. The young receiver, number 80, Ryan Robisky, whose dad is a coach at the Cleveland Browns. Wow. You have to make that catch on third and nine. That would have been a huge conversion. But this guy's a young, no, they, talented I was gonna receiver. Say, now. They really like Robisky, the future that he has. But as a young player, what big, big play there on third and long. And at some point, Texas, who has led the country in block kicks over the last five years, don't take for granted punt protection right now, how important it is. And the Paso has been solid. I mean, he can really hang a punt. Ross is back inside the 15-yard line. That one came out of the clouds. So it is Saturday Night Football on ABC. Tonight, Austin, Texas. Next Saturday, Los Angeles. Can anyone tell me what happened to Napoleon when he tried to invade Russia? Brian? Hey, Brian. Somebody's going to get their first loss here tonight. It's not going to be us, is it? No, sir! You can take them. you, Ryan. We're down. Last chance for the Hawks. Blue 80. Eye the ball, Ryan. Three days and go. They're lazy and a little slow. Are you staring at my breasts? I don't know. But when an underachiever, Zach, one of our box boys, I'm Amy, hey. decides to step up. She has a thing for the employee of the month. I'll win employee of the month. He can't do it alone. It's a go. 
Clean up on aisle 13. It's dangerous! From the producers of Wedding Crashers. <laughs> employee of the month. This is an 81 Honda. How dare you? Rated PG-13. In theaters everywhere October 6th. Vivica A. Fox, she's a big screen diva, but to make it on the dance floor, it's gonna take more than a little kung fu. <sighs> I'll keep out. Dancing with the Stars, live two hour premiere, Tuesday, 8, 7 Central, only on ABC. John Saunders in New York with our Sports Center 30 at 30 update. Congratulations to the Detroit Shock. They win their second WNBA championship in four years, beating Sacramento. And our good friend Swing Cash gets a title. And Maria Sharapova wins the U.S. Open and claims her second major title. Brent, back to you. Pretty one, John. That's nice. She won that. Won a Wimbledon title a few years ago. Good for her. 4 5, 17 7. Bob Davy, Kirk Herb Street, Lisa Salters. I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you along now. One versus two, and number two with the lead here. I should say number one with the lead, 17 7. Texas was number one after they won it all. Roseboro. Charles, the running back. Staying alive. Powerful run. And for those of you who may have just joined us, there were two very key defensive plays turned in by Lauren Ides, Coach David. And Brent, this first one as Texas is pounding on the goal line was just a great effort play. This is the first play of the second half on offense for Texas. James Laurinaitis steps in front and gets the interception. Two huge game, two huge plays now. And with the loss of Bobby Carpenter, Anthony Schlegel, and of course A.J. Hawk, they needed somebody to see who would emerge as a leader in a big game. And so far, it's been Laurinaitis. On second and one, the youngster again for the Texas first down. They move the chains, and uh, the one thing that Texas has not been able to do tonight. Finish what they started. Only their one long scoring drive behind Colt McCoy. Otherwise, they have struggled. When you think back a year ago of just putting the ball in Vince Young's hands when it's a 17-7 game and you're down. Kind of uncharted waters right now for this offense. First down and 10 for McCoy. Runs over to the right to buy time. Incomplete, and they lose it down. Had a shot at it downfield that time, and that was Jermichael Finley, the talented future tight end here. And uh, let me go back now to the, the Vince Young story, because after the Rose Bowl, let's remember that Vince said, I was coming back to school. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it again. And uh, the coaching staff said, yeah, we might have Vince for one more year. And uh, then there was a phone call. Mac Brown told us, and uh, Vince said, Coach, I'd like to come over and see you. And Mac said, sure, come on over, Vince. And uh, Mac said, I, I looked out the front door, and I saw the white limo pull up, and the door opened, and I knew <laughs> he was gone. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> you think Mac's heart sunk a little bit when he saw that limo pull up? limo, that's true. <laughs> Second and ten. Selvin Young and Laurenitis back over to make the stop, number 33. Of course, at the end of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game, and isn't Laurenitis a candidate for the Buckeyes? And to honor their determination, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each University General Scholarship Fund. Laurenitis and Troy Smith are having a pretty good internal battle for the uh, Buckeye Award here tonight. Brent Bob and I were talking at the break. Where is Lima Swede gone? They have not tried to get their most talented wide receiver the football. Maybe here on third down, they try to look for him isolated against an Ohio State corner. Three down for the Bucks. Third and five. Wide open penalty flag. Penalty flag. Thrown by the linesman. Coming back. Things have not gone right for the defending national champions here tonight. 
And what makes it really difficult, it's going to put him in about a third and 15 situation. Holding, 79 offense, 10 yard penalty, previous spot, still third down. Big Tony Hills, the only new starter on the offensive line for Texas, was a tight end. Right there, he grabs the jersey of number one, Marcus Freeman. Tony Hills making his, one of his few starts that he's had an opportunity, but he did play quite a bit last year, filling in for Jonathan Scott in this game against Ohio State. And that's the first flag thrown against the Longhorn. Six penalties against the Buckeyes for 40 yards tonight. Third and 15. Drops off the screen, Charles. Cuts off a blocker, but uh, well short of the first down. That's exactly what Greg Davis wanted to avoid, getting off schedule with the down and distance with a young quarterback. You want to avoid second and eight, second and nine, third and 11, third and 13. Really gives you no opportunity to have a long drive, Coach. Penalties, and I think it's key right now for Texas. Mack Brown, get that offense together over there. Get Colt McCoy around his teammates because right now you sense the lack of confidence in that Texas offense. Goes back to the, the interception to start the half. Fourth down and four, and Gonzalez will join up with Ginn. Johnson trying to kick it away from him, and this is by far his worst punt of the night, but it takes a huge Texas bounce, and Ginn's got it on a big hop. And down short of the 20-yard line. What a reminder that the season premiere of Gray's Anatomy coming up Thursday, September 21st, 9, 8 Central. Make a move with TD's hottest doctors to a new season and a new night. Gray's Anatomy. Part of our sellout crowd, there's upwards of 20 some thousand fans who came down here from the state of Ohio. Some of them are over at the Irwin Center. They bought out the basketball arena over there, and uh, I'm sure they're excited watching this game on the big screen over there. I bet there've been some huge cheers. And Troy Smith has led the Buckeyes to the lead, and now Maurice Wells. You get a series of downs here. Number 34, Michael Griffin. One of the Griffin twins makes a stop. Kirk, see Ohio State brought their band down here. One benefactor gave $225,000 to pay for the band's expenses. That was really nice of you to do. Oh, me. That band really yeah. appreciates. I, I tell you what, in Columbus, there's Woody Hayes, there's Archie Griffin, and there's the best damn band in the land, and that's about to pick the pecking order right there. So you and Spielman went together <laughs> yeah, okay. for the 225000 That's it? <laughs> Uh, I score one for the coach. <laughs> seven. He got seven. Into the third. And Saturday night football presented by Southwest Airlines returns after this message and a word from our ABC station. The 2007 Chevy Tahoe. It has an available 320 horsepower. the best fuel efficiency in its class. Tahoe, the power to give something back. That's an American revolution. Subway Dinner Theater presents The Unfed. and for dinner subway restaurants where you can get freshly baked bread every day and with five delicious types to choose from the whole family will be happy subway eat fresh. this fall plan your escape lost the brand new season premieres wednesday october 4th at 9 8 central only on abc Now at SK, you can dress sharp and buy smart with two Kilburn and Finch suits, plus two shirts and two ties, all for only $250. Every girl crazy about a sharp dress man. Dress sharp. Captain, 
I've prepared you a nice salad. How am I to eat a salad? Sir, Taco Bell makes a chicken ranch salad. It's easy to eat anywhere. On the go, as they say. Oi, let me give ye a pat on the back. <laughs> Taco Bell's new chicken ranch salad burrito. Marinated all white meat chicken, crisp romaine lettuce, and a zesty avocado ranch dressing wrapped up in a flour tortilla. For the salad that lets you keep one hand on the wheel, think outside the bun. Shop dress man. Come see the new collection of Kilburn and Finch wool blend suits at SK Men's Stores. Two suits, two shirts, and two ties, all for $2.50. Every girl crazy about a shop dress man. Dress sharp. At home, at work, WSOCTV.com. We're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. And tonight's area coverage brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. As you look down here, Texas Memorial Stadium, Darrell Royal Field. The legendary coach in attendance here tonight, sellout crowd, and the Horns have struggled. 17-7, they trail the Buckeyes. They pulled it out a year ago in the fourth quarter in Columbus. Troy Smith incomplete looking for Gonzalez who's had the hot hand for the Bucks tonight seven catches 122 yards and a score for number 11. Well, the last two incompletions by Troy Smith were dropped passes by the wide receivers. The receivers have had a good night but it's one on one again. Ohio State spreading the Texas defense and secondary all over the field one on one opportunity that time by Anthony Gonzalez to make a big play right in his hands he just dropped the ball. Matthew McConaughey has come down from his luxury box to the sideline and trying to whip up the horn faithful. <laughs> Must have a new role there. How about that? Beard going. Here's Troy on the move. He'll just hike it out of bounds over there on that far sideline. Eddie George, of course, the Buckeyes' last Heisman Trophy winner is in attendance and so too is Chris Carter their outstanding wide receiver and there you see uh, look down at Eddie George there he was their last Heisman Trophy man. and uh, I think there's uh, Eddie moved on up the way there's Chris he and Eddie were uh, were together for a while. You really feel like Texas needs a spark in the kicking game to turn this game around. Booming a punt. Fielded by Ross. Short of the 40 yard line. Let's take a look at the Pack Life game summary here, Kirk. Well, it's been a, a multiple of things, but of course, it's been Troy Smith. He's been the difference in this game. Making big plays here. This is the biggest play probably right before the half. Finding Teddy again isolated, going to the audible, making the play, but also the defense. Laronitis with a big hit. One of the turnovers that Ohio State's been able to force, and they've been able to put pressure on the quarterback, Colt McCoy. This time, not seeing Laronitis, throwing it right into his chest early in the second half for a pick. Ohio State's had the upper hand because of the experience, and their young defense has played very well against Colt McCoy. So that's your Pacific Life game summary. 1420 and Texas needs to get something going mid all beautiful throw that time by McCoy and there is Lima Swede and I don't think he's caught one since the second quarter that time Texas did a nice job of protecting the quarterback Colt McCoy giving him time to look into the coverage he saw one-on-one -on -one coverage. And he made a great throw for a first down for Texas. This is what they needed to start the drive. He had an open receiver underneath that he decided to pass on, and Finley gets the big throw downfield. 19 yards comes in underneath. For a uh, short gain to Cosby. Should mention Texas going no huddle. A lot of times you see a team go to the no huddle to try to create some tempo to get up, get to the line of scrimmage, less thinking, try to become the aggressor with the play caller. It's interesting with Texas no huddle, shotgun, there's no snap count. This is all done on a silent snap. When the ball moves, Texas moves. There's the inside handoff. Tough run by Selvin Young for the first down. 
And can the Horns finish this drive off and make a stand here? Very important for Greg Davis not to abandon the run. Nice balanced attack. Got a big throw by Colt McCoy downfield. Now you get to continue to mix it up and be aggressive with a play calling. But don't go away from Selvin Young and Jamal Charles and their threat of running the football. Going for it all. Swing grabs it. And a battle. Let's see. They're going to wave it off incomplete. We'll take a look at the... Uh, at the replay, they ruled incomplete, did not have possession. The two officials right there, you saw a good picture of them looking to each other. Boy, we've said, when are they going to get the football to Lima Swede? This time they try to take advantage of his great size at six feet five, going up and over Malcolm Jenkins, the best cover corner for Ohio State. Malcolm Jenkins actually takes the ball away from Lima Swede, and then when they fell to the ground, Nobody had possession there. By the time they did, they're out of bounds. And Lima Swede that time got away, Kirk, with putting his left hand on Malcolm Jenkins' shoulder and tugging him down a little bit. But what a great effort by Swede. Excellent coverage by Malcolm Jenkins. He deserves all the credit in the world on that play. Second down and 10. Sticking with the conservative call after going for all of it. Uh, so in this sequence, Marcus Freeman and Lauren Itis making the stop for the Buckeyes. This will put them in third and long. Either team having a lot of success tonight against good defenses on third and third down. Ohio State two of nine and Texas only two of seven. Again, the young quarterback. How does he handle this situation here, coach, on third and long? Uh, and keep in mind, Vince Young's not here, Kirk. But Texas has won 21 straight ball games. This team ain't going to go away now. Down by 10, they would even take a field goal in this situation if they get a little bit closer now. They're going to drop it off to incomplete as Selvin Young looked downfield and dropped it. Let's see if they're going to try a long one with Johnson. I think I see Greg coming onto the field. He's out of Georgia, remember? Transferred here from Vanderbilt. He was a freshman All-American. Brent, really good decision by Colt McCoy. You could see that he looked downfield. He wanted to squeeze it into Finley, the tight end. But because Ohio State dropped the defensive end, Golston, it opened it up to the outside. If, if Selvin Young makes that catch, he has a shot at a first down. Jordan Shipley is the holder. This is a 45-yarder. No good. Not even close, and a big miss at the 12-18 mark of the fourth quarter because they stayed back by two scores. The hole was fine. Just pulled it off to the right. country just got smaller. Southwest has lowered fares on our long distance flights. See how we're taking low fares farther at southwest.com. You are now free to move about the country. Now on DVD, Lost, the complete second season, the extended experience. I came back to tell you we can take them. Run! Own the seven disc set with over eight hours of bonus secrets before the new season begins. Lost, the complete second season. Own it today. Sure looked good on paper. But who's gonna help you make sure it looks good on stage? How long is this thing? Uh, I don't know. Now come on, get to the good stuff. Oh, stop, stop! There it is. Oh, that's it. Wait, wait, here it comes, here it comes. Nice. Look at that. I could watch that all day. One more time? Sure. So I get football 24-7 with Dish Network. 24-7. Come on, man, you gotta feel it. I feel it. No, you have got to feel it.
All right. You're getting games every night of the week. Okay. It's about half the price of digital cable. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, wait a minute. Let's get the lawnmower. Get football 24-7 and games every night of the week. Just $24.99 a month for 10 months. Dish Network. Better TV for all. Tuesday, the Dancing with the Stars season premiere on ABC. Singular All-America Player of the Week update. Notre Dame's Brady Quinn, 25 of 36, 287 yards, three touchdowns without a pick. A lot of Quinn, all Irish. Text vote to 87654 and your singular wireless phone to vote. And with that strong performance by Notre Dame, the vote following this game and the two polls is going to be interesting. If this stays, you would expect Texas to drop a couple of spots. But does USC move to two, or does Notre Dame jump back up? The vote this week going to be very interesting. And the Buckeyes go to work on the clock, which brings up something that Mac Brown dislikes intently. And that is the clock starts after a change of possession. So down by two scores now with 11.50 to go. You know, Bob Davey, you have been there. The pressure that this puts on your offense when you're trying to play catch up. And particularly because, Brent, Ohio State has the ability to play with a fullback in the game, line up and run the ball. Here they're going back to their normal one-back spread. But Ohio State can pound it a little bit. They're not just a conventional spread offense. But with Troy Smith and his experience, would not be surprised to see them continue to be aggressive even as the clock dwindles down. Second and nine. Putting it into Ginn's hands. Can Ginn get the first down? He does. First down for the Buckeyes, and a penalty flag is thrown further downfield. The one point that we must make here tonight, the Longhorns have missed Terrell Brown. The organization's done a great job. Number 31 in the defense. Five-yard penalty. Tacked on the end of the run. The play resulted. Ross has had his hands full with Ted Ginn here tonight. Well, Ross has been isolated a lot tonight on number seven for Ohio State. They called the incidental face mask. They're going to add five yards on against uh, Texas. But you have to go back to the play call. Second and long. You're thinking that they may want to try to run some clock. It just shows you how much confidence they, they have in Troy Smith making throws and making good decisions that they can still be aggressive and now maybe get back to running the football. The pros believe that Terrell Brown is the best corner here at Texas, even though he doesn't have blinding speed and he's missing tonight, suspended. They come back to Gonzalez over there, and Smith is moving the ball through the air. And, you, and what a senior quarterback, a guy that's been through all that Troy Smith does for you, the confidence of Jim Tressel to throw this football here. A lot of confidence. We've seen it now two plays in a row, but again, it's going back to Brent's point. It's Brandon Foster, the young corner who steps in for Terrell Brown. We've seen it all night, whether it's been Brandon Foster, Ryan Palmer, the Griffin brothers isolated. Ohio State's taking advantage of matchups away from Aaron Ross to try to exploit this Texas defense without uh, Terrell Brown. And we talk a lot about Vince Young, but let's not forget Vince. Let's not forget he had help defensively. Huff is with the Raiders. Griffin's with the Vikings. And here, Pittman is just shredding that horn defense for another first and ten. So there are so many key players missing from this Longhorn team. Very, very impressive drive here by Ohio State. Blocking downfield by the receivers. Top hard running by Antonio Pittman. But it's again the way they're able to mix up the play calling here late in the football game when you're expecting them to be conservative they continue to attack and again it's the confidence that they have in the quarterback Troy Smith TJ Downing the offensive guard a great block Kirk on that play ball start 75 offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Brent, how impressive this is. When you put it in perspective, Mac Brown, 44-3 and three at home in this stadium. He lost two games in 1999. His second year, 44-3 and three in Austin. It's like he took a shot tonight. Yes. He's working hard tonight. 
This is a real struggle. You know, he had uh, knee replacement on that left knee, and watching him in practice, he had to use a golf cart. He's had a little bit of hard time moving around, and I'm sure it's uh, it's difficult standing down there on the sideline, especially the way they're playing. There's the penalty flag thrown by the umpire, and you all know what that means on this play. 9:33. The Buckeyes working on that clock. Penalty obviously moves Ohio State back. Second penalty in a row. As we continue to talk about Terrell Brown, it's not just physically losing Terrell Brown. It's miscommunication in that secondary. Every time they're dropping back to throw, they're open receivers downfield. Holding, Holding. Offense. offense, number 50. 50. 10, yards. 10 yards, previous spot. Still first down. And that's Doug Daddish, the senior center from Warren, Ohio. Earlier, it was the sophomore tackle, Alex Boone. And uh, moved over to that left tackle spot. Daddish moved off of it to center. And uh, so Boone has not graded out as an A tonight, but he has a tremendous upside. He was at uh, one of the very top offensive linemen in that class that was recruited. Both of these schools recruit so many, so many outstanding football players. First and 25. The toss to Pittman. Trying to stay in bounds. The clock continues to run. There comes the penalty flag and a face mask. Roderick McElroy grabbing the face mask. Number 38. You can see him shaking his head, knowing what happened. Well, if it's a personal foul, they're going to be kicking themselves after Ohio State had two miscues with penalties of their own. Personal foul. Yeah. Wow. Face mask. Number 38 on the defense. 15 yards tacked on the end of the run. Automatic. First down. McElroy gets out there, but he holds on to that face mask of Pittman and pulls. Anytime you pull and there's an official there, it's not only a face mask, but it's 15 yards in the first down. And the freshman, Roderick McElroy, Kirk, getting the start tonight because the junior, Drew Kelson, couldn't go. But that is a huge, huge personal foul. Ohio State was almost back to the point where they were probably ready to settle maybe for a field goal. But now the first down. In the hands of Pittman plowing straight ahead. Last year, of course, the let me check that. That was Chris Wells, the uh, the fine uh, freshman running back. There he is right there. So let me correct myself. Uh, Chris, the freshman from Akron, Ohio, and uh, didn't the Akron team today do itself proud against North Carolina State? Uh, now we uh, see that Pittman has uh, come on to the field and replaced him. Imagine in Akron in a neighborhood where you have in the same area Chris Wells, Antonio Pittman, and Tyrell Sutton all playing in the same Pee Wee League. There's some talent growing up in Akron, Ohio. Indeed, Sutton, a great runner at Northwestern. Second down and eight. Deflected incomplete. And that was Brian Robison doing what he does best. One of the more athletic defensive linemen in the country jumping up and knocking it down. And Jim Trussell now. The third and eight. Checking that, that playbook. And uh, he usually is lethal in a situation like this. He knows how to use a clock. He's very conservative. And as Kirk pointed out, he's got the added advantage of a veteran quarterback. He can put up high percentage passes in this situation. Let's see what Trussell and Troy Smith come up with here. We're going to throw for it. First down, Buckeyes inside the 10-yard line. And number 80, Brian Robisky, the sophomore. Cleveland makes the play in the first down. And you have to love that Brian Robisky, Kirk, comes back after dropping the ball on the critical third down earlier. And how about the confidence to throw the ball again in that situation? Troy Smith, the confidence. They're aggressive again, but going back. I hate to continue to pound on this, but Brandon Foster, Griffin, we've seen that this time falling down as he's in coverage in a big third down play. Brandon Foster just lost his footing and it allowed Robisky to pick up a first down. a handoff and battling for the goal line. Antonio Pittman, the ball carrier. 
It'll be second down and goal. And you would think the way things have gone here tonight, if Tressel and the Buckeyes can score seven here, it will be game, set, and match. Still got seven minutes to go. Lots of things can happen. But the Texas offense has not been explosive here tonight. Nine plays, 70 yards, over five minutes off the clock, mixing the run with the throw. It's the advantage in college football of having a quarterback that can make good decisions and give you that trust to call any play you want. Deontay Johnson, the fullback, trying to drop the hammer. For the end zone, they want the signal. Nothing yet. On the carry. Touchdown, Antonio Pittman. And the Buckeye Nation has this one in hand now. It would take a Texas miracle to pull this out. Play great effort here, Brent. Inside here, just a good push by the offensive line. Some penetration by Killebrew, but hard running that time. And he gets the push. And Pittman shows he has the toughness when he gets down to the goal line to get it ball into the end zone. Now, this is one that they should review to take a look to make sure that the ball broke the plane as the officials come in. And remember, Mac Brown cannot challenge it. He'd already used his challenge. Petri tacks on the extra point. 24-7. So we go back to the point we made earlier in this game. You want to take that challenge to the fourth quarter. Even if you were going to lose it, make sure you got it just in case. It's too small. Car's too small. Auto claustrophobia. It's taken a devastating toll. But its days are numbered thanks to the all-new Nissan Versa. Versa treats small car symptoms with best-in-class interior space. Now this is roomy. Versa lets you be carefree and hands-free with Bluetooth technology. I like that. Versa will help you take control of auto claustrophobia today. Ask your Nissan dealer if Versa is right for you. <laughs> You're so cute. Get full from Taco Bell's value menu. Bruno, what is the holdup? I'm full. Not possible. You are hungry, Bruno. Nine-time competitive eating champion. You don't get full. Eight and a half pound burrito for warm-up. Hungry Bruno, full! Oh! Introducing Taco Bell's half-pound value menu lineup. Now fill up on any of three hefty half-pound burritos to keep your stomach and your wallet full. Think outside the bun. This premiere is huge. Gotta see this in high def. Hear what everyone's saying about the HD movie event of the season. It portrays our kind in, in a positive light, which is nice. We're getting ready for the big premiere on Comcast. Jerry is an HD freak. Can't wait. It's gonna be amazing. The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. See the HD premiere at Stars HD On Demand, only with Comcast Digital Cable. It's comcast -ing. Troy Smith and the Buckeyes have this one well under control, 24-7. Dominated, you go back to the key play in this game, and it well could be Laurinaitis forcing a fumble very early in the game, but it looked like the Longhorns were gonna strike. And Eddie George, the last of the Heisman Trophy winners, enjoying this one down on the sideline. Having a little fun with the Texas fans. Why not? <laughs> and then one thing all those NFL players say, and the Texas players were talking about this yesterday, all those guys in the NFL call back and say, look, the best time you're ever going to have is when you're in college. Exactly. No doubt about it. Justin Blaylock, the right tackle who we're going to see coming out here, uh, he certainly talked to Roy Williams, he told us, and uh, that's one of the reasons why he came back. 24-7, 6.27 to go. Number one in control, the Ohio State Buckeyes, and they're going to be challenged for a title all the way this year. No, 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 no. It's too small. Auto claustrophobia. It affects more people than you think. Oh. But there's hope on the horizon, and it's called the Nissan Versa. Versa provides relief with best-in-class rear seat leg room. Versa keeps you going for over 400 miles on just one tank. Versa will save the world from auto claustrophobia. One 
driver at a time. Ask your Nissan dealer if Versa is right for you. It's right for me. Glidden Team Colors Paint, you can get the official colors of your favorite team. Sir, you're all set. Whoever that may be. Exclusively from Glidden and only at the Home Depot. could get rid of the things you don't like about credit cards. The hype, the confusion. What if you could start over and this time do it right? Live Tuesday, all of America will be doing it. 11 competitive stars yeah. in a two hour season premiere. That was supersonic. Dancing with the Stars, live Tuesday, 8, 7 central, only on ABC. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines, the low fare from here to there. It's on Southwest Airlines at southwest.com. Next Generation Thinking, brought to you by the Nissan Versa. And Allstate, are you in good hands? Tonight's area of coverage has been brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. Mac Brown told us a little anecdote about the President of the United States, President Bush. He's a big, big Texas fan, and he likes to go to bed early at night, and the Rose Bowl was still unfolding. He tried to go off with about seven minutes to go, and he got up, and he had to watch the rest of the game. And I dare say tonight in the White House, he's tucking himself in, folks. 24-7 <laughs> now with six minutes to go. You know, what, what concerns you if you're a Texas fan is not only losing this football game, but look at the production that they've had in the past under Mac Brown. And a lot of that had to do with the way they were able to get it done with Vince Young and being very versatile. But I, the thing that I've seen tonight, playing at home, they didn't show as much fire and intensity as they played with last year. Now, we're going to say that's all because of Vince Young? I don't know. They were shut out by Oklahoma and it was last not last year but the year before in 2004 I believe it was 12 nothing in the uh, Red River shootout and uh, don't anybody dare give up on the Longhorns let me let me just say this right now there's some football players down there they had a they had a cornerback suspended they got another little youngster over there at quarterback that's pretty good they got some talented football players here. They ran up against the buzzsaw tonight that's been waiting for a year to hammer back for that tough, tough loss up in Columbus. These Buckeyes are going to be challenging for a national championship, and Longhorn just had their hands full. They were just outmatched here tonight. That's all. You'd lose one, and you'd go on to the next one. And I think we really have to talk about this Ohio State defense. I know, Kirk, you live in Columbus, obviously. They were uptight coming down here because this young defense last week gave up a lot of yards to Northern Illinois. But they have played outstanding. And that guy right there, number 33, go back to that play early in the game. That was the game-changing play. Laura Knight is causing that fun. The other thing coming into this game is the Ohio State coaches felt that they, they were kind of assuming things, how this team would react, but they really didn't know because they've never been in this kind of situation. All of a sudden, after the game, players start to surface, leadership starts to surface, and the man that you just mentioned, James Laronitis, all of a sudden starts to become one of the anchors for the Ohio State defense. Almost blocked. I mean, they almost picked that one. And uh, they're going to have great field position as a result. One of the one of the great streaks in college football is coming to an end, and it's not Mac Brown's winning streak, folks. We'll talk about Gene Chizik. 29 straight wins as a defensive coordinator when we come back. Why do you always get the front seat? Because I have the higher education. What do you I mean? took honors classes. In I high school. I, hey. 
It's Bobby Bowden. I'm gonna touch him. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. I'm still gonna touch him. Part of Allstate Your Choice Auto Insurance. Are you in good hands? That wasn't him. Are you still touched him? When you have one of the best money market rates in the country, you just have to celebrate. Go to eTrade.com and be blown away. Hey, I'll be there in five minutes. Oh, and my parents are coming too. Introducing Red Zone Deep Cleansing Body Wash, the active formula with micro beads. Cleans deep down to the pore. I thought you said he was a fan. Old Spice Deep Cleansing Body Wash. Nothing cleans deeper. One by one, they're coming. Five new vehicles that will change the way you experience the road. Five new vehicles that embody the next generation Nissan thinking for the next generation Nissan drivers. One by one, they're coming. Get ready. Shift 2.0 is here. Four teams, two coasts, one memorable Monday night. Joe Gibbs and Washington begin their championship run against former Redskin Brad Johnson and the Vikings. Then Chargers star LaDainian Tomlinson visits Randy Moss and the Raiders. Vikings, Redskins, Chargers, Raiders, starting at 7 Eastern, a doubleheader season premiere of ESPN's Monday Night Football. As you look down on, uh, for the large part, a very disappointed crowd, we remind you that uh, over on Sports Center. We'll have full post-game coverage from Austin when it ends. Uh, Randy Moss has issues with coach. I mean, that shocks us, doesn't it, folks? <laughs> Last race before the chase, they come down the stretch in NASCAR. You won't be taking any. Art Shell's not taking any lift from anybody. I'm telling you that right now. And uh, they start to go to work uh, on the uh, on the clock here with the the youngster Chris Wells and the. Kirk, you've watched him back in the scrimmage, back in sure. Columbus. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about that. Future star, superstar. He, he came in a little bit early, had a chance to go through the spring ball. Talking to him, he said, you know, it, 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 my head was spinning. There was so much going on with learning new terminology, adjusting to the speed of the game. He said, I, I just wasn't ready. And he said, right in the middle of two-a-days, the light went off. I started to emerge and feel more comfortable, kind of like I did in high school. And now the tandem of Antonio Pittman and Chris Wells gives Jim Tressel the best tailbacks he's had since he's been at Ohio State. Here he comes, uh, stopped by the Gene Chiswick coached defense. And uh, folks, if you're not aware, there he is, 29 consecutive games. He was the defensive coordinator in the unbeaten season at Auburn. Came in here last year. And he is a future head coach waiting to happen. Anyone at the end of this season interested in a coach should, and he's not, trust me, he didn't ask me to say this. He's one of the most impressive assistants you'd ever want to be around. And he is the full package for some for some organization. And uh, who knows, maybe they'll uh, they'll keep him right here in Austin. But he is a wonderful, wonderful coach. And Bob Davey, I don't have to tell you what it's like for a coordinator to be on the winning side 29 straight times. That's just phenomenal. And the thing you like he's about well, Gene Chiswick, he's humble. He tells you he was at a great program at Auburn. It has a bunch of good defensive players with Tommy Tuberville, and he comes in here to Texas and he inherited the same thing. But you're right, 29 straight wins is an amazing step. What I love is how he downplays it. We want to come in and we all want to talk in the media about his streak. And he said, you know, it's, it's about the players. It's not about me. As Coach just said, he's been around a lot of great players and a team that believes in his philosophy and that's helped him to become a great coordinator, future great head coach. You know what's amazing to me? Ohio State now, how talented are they? They had five first-round draft picks last year that left this program, correct? And nine overall draft picks. Yep. To come down here and do what they did tonight with a well, young football team. Buckeyes will use a timeout here with 141. The end is near. And uh, TCU will have the uh, longest win streak when this one ends. 11 straight wins. Ohio State of West Virginia would have nine. <laughs> It's a place that breathes life into ideas. 
a network for the creative thinkers, entrepreneurs, and pioneers of tomorrow. Is it any wonder that sitting at its center is a university whose sole purpose is helping people discover theirs? We're Texas. What starts here changes the world. 24-7, and uh, Kirk, you just handed me a great note here. If Texas doesn't score the first time ever that a number one has gone on the road and held a number two to single digits. Team breaking in nine new defensive starters. Goes on the road, holds Texas so far to 284 yards of total offense and seven points. An impressive and amazing feat by this Ohio State defense. We've talked a lot about Gene Chizik, but Jim Haycock on the other side, defensive coordinator, did a great job for Ohio State. Well, today's Chevrolet players of the game. There they are, the two quarterbacks, Troy Smith, Colt McCoy. Troy had a huge night, 259 yards and uh, and two touchdowns. In recognition of their effort, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. What a big night for Troy Smith and the Buckeyes. We may have differing opinions up here about the Heisman after two weeks, but the reason Troy Smith is a Heisman candidate over his own teammate, Ted, again, is because the way he provides leadership and because his hands are on the football every single play for this Ohio State offense. And, and my thoughts go to Colt McCoy, a happy-go-lucky kind of bright-eyed guy. Everything's going great. Everything's going wonderful. He will now find out what it's like to be a major college quarterback in a place like Austin because I don't care how much they love the name, the heat will start to happen right now on this kid. We'll find out how he responds after this game. What was the name of the town? Tuscola. He went from Tuscola to all of a sudden the big stage. So we uh, want to take a quick look at the ESPNU All-State standings review because I mentioned earlier Notre Dame's going to jump a very, very impressive win. USC could jump up to number two. We'll be out there in the Coliseum, Nebraska, USC next week. All right, Kirk, you got to vote. What are your thoughts? I, I probably, I'm going to, I'm going to keep Ohio State obviously one, but I, I'm, <laughs> Notre Dame was two for me last week, so Notre Dame for me will be two, and then USC at three with Auburn at four. I got to teach him how to promote the upcoming game, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you're leading me towards USC. There's, USC, are you going to team me up on USC there, now? Go there's, Trojans! You know, there's some things that Lee Corso hasn't taught him yet. You know, <laughs> okay. I, I, Little tease there. There's a first down and self and young out to the. Uh, uh, this was great fun this week, and uh, I'll tell you, Kirk, nobody works any harder in college football than you. I can't believe uh, your schedule. And, Bob, uh, we look forward to, to uh, seeing you out on the West Coast. I, we had great, great fun with this. It's such a wonderful staff to deal with. Folks, I'm at practice the other day waiting for Max to come out. Here comes the golf cart, and guess who's sitting next to him? There's Bob Davis down over there. He and the coach are coming to practice together. That was pretty good. That day. <laughs> yeah, until you pushed me out and yanked me out and jumped on the cart. Is the swing incomplete now? So Troy Smith is the hero of the night, and uh, boy, he's put together some great games. It's just—it's wonderful to see this uh, this progress of a young man. You know, some 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 youngsters don't make it; they fall by the wayside for whatever variety of reasons. And uh, but this this young man hung in there, took his punishment, came back better than ever. It's terrific. Start looking at the big picture now for Ohio State. It's a non-conference game, you know. Conference games always matter, but you start thinking about a chance to maybe run the table, and they have some big, big games coming up on the road later that we'll probably have a chance to see them play in. You bet. And uh, they'll have a dandy to go down to Iowa City. There's, there's a back with a great future, huh? Charles has got that little burst. Bob, it won't be long before he takes one to the house again. Somebody, they play Rice, I believe, don't they? Yeah, you know what's great about him is you think about him being a, a track guy running a 10-100, but he doesn't play foot. He's a football player who happens to show up and is able to run a 10-1. He is not a, a track guy. He is a tough football player. Well, they found another star linebacker, didn't they? Sure did. Laurinaitis is there. Pops will be proud of him tonight. Kirk, you played in a lot of big games. You agree, agree with me, nothing is more fun than to come into an environment like this. And you've got your little group of 4,000 fans. 
and enjoy this victory on the road. This is about as good as it gets as a football player or a coach to come into this stadium like this and it's, win this Especially game. after the way Ohio State and Texas had a classic last year in Columbus, and you felt that the winner had a shot to get to the national title, and the Longhorns eventually won. I think that's been burning the fans and the, the team to get back to have an opportunity to play Texas, and now to have the upper hand after last year, you'll probably see a pretty good celebration with the 4,000 fans in the corner when the clock goes off. There's a lot of classy fans down here. I talked to some Buckeyes who traveled down here, and they said the folks have been awful nice to them, and then they walked around the streets of Austin, and uh, they've had a good time bringing the band down in here. There, there you are, part of the Buckeye Nation, and over the Irwin Center. I'm sure they've enjoyed it on the big screen over there. Athletic director Gene Smith, uh, he was the host for a big group that came down here. And they just had a wonderful time, and of course, winning the football game. Well, that's just frosting, folks. And there's a penalty that might have been a face mask. I don't know. Uh, we'll hang on to Selvin Young, cut across the field, looking to pick up a block, and he's to the 23 with the uh, final seconds right there, and Anderson Russell making the stop. But again, I, there was a penalty flight so I was holding. So I was wrong about that. I thought there might have been a hand right there. But so Mac Brown and, and his staff will go back to work. He's still got uh, got plenty, plenty left on the table. And one thing about losing early, you can gain some ground. You don't want to be losing late in this BCS thing. But early, you can come back a little bit. Well, we're going to find out how good Texas is in the coming weeks. It's a much, much tougher schedule this year than what they had a year ago. And if, if Terrell Brown affected this team on defense, that's one thing. But personally, I want to see the fire. I want to see the intensity and the leadership that this team played with last year because tonight it wasn't on display. All I can say, folks, is that Ohio State came to Austin and messed with Texas. There's the handshake. Let's go to Lisa. Great. Great. Hey, good job. Thanks, Brent. Troy, it turns out that the difference in the game was that touchdown that you guys scored late in the, in the first half. What did you see on that defense that made you audible? Uh, it was, a you know, just basic calls all day uh, involving their safety. Uh, that was a great play, but the whole game was a good game. You know, without the guys up front doing a great job, I think we only allowed one sack today, and that was huge. It was, it was them up front. Now, knowing that one of their key corners was suspended for this game, how were you able to just pick apart their secondary? You know, I can't, I can't say enough, you know, more than, you know, it's our game plan. It's our coaching. It's the coaching staff. They put in endless, endless hours of film study. And, you know, we be, we are in there with them also, but it's our staff. You know, they do a great job. After that heartbreaking loss in Columbus last year, what's it like for you to get this one here on their turf now? Oh, no. It's, it's not a revenge thing. You know, any and every win that we get, during the course of the season is a good win. All right, thanks a lot. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Brent. Thank you, Lisa. Troy Smith, a serious Heisman candidate now, as he leads the Buckeyes to a 24-7 victory in Austin, Texas. And a reminder now to tune in to SportsCenter on ESPN. If you missed any of the scores and highlights from earlier in the day, get caught up with everything. And a reminder also, join us next week. Saturday Night Football on ABC will feature Nebraska versus USC from the Los Angeles Coliseum. And here tonight, folks, it was the thrill of it for the Ohio State Buckeyes.